everyone, and welcome to the Anime Izuka Podcast, week 13 of the summer 2020 season. On this show, we talk about the current season of anime airing every week. I'm your host, David, and joining today, we have Shren. Hello, everyone. Next up, we have Ku. Hello. And finally, we have Sasha. Please call me Migi. Migi. All right. Um, we have a couple of anime news. So uh, um, the big the big one this week is uh, Attack on Titan, which I didn't realize was supposed to air in the fall. So so we did get announced that like all the usual like streaming services they got they say it's airing later this this year, which is very weird because none of the other sites had it on for fall twenty twenty, and then somehow like I guess like NHK is where it's airing, and like the NHK website says it's um airing December 7th and then I guess like Amy's and we're like made uh reached out to Funimation and asked for the confirmation they said yeah it's airing December 7th so I guess so I guess it is officially confirmed it's still very weird how this all happened like it didn't feel very official so I'm assuming December 7th is the air date for Attack on Titan the final season so and then people were speculating too that it was probably gonna be 30 episodes we'll do like do like or yeah 30 episodes do like the four in december and then do the full winter and spring so so i'm so i'm, I'm so excited i hope this is true that it airs december 7th so we'll look forward to that when it comes and we'll add on to on um, the podcast when it airs and then also just um season two rent a girlfriend for for all you sims just like Woo! for all the sims like shrine and Koo. <laughs> super excited for season wow. two can't Me wait too, guys so excited! Very excited. <laughs> I got my retainer. I'm ready. <laughs> yes. So. Yeah, the awesome is in this one too, man. So you can uh, you can watch your sword so, or whatever you said that one. So all you said to celebrate <laughs> hey, season man. two, season two, rent a girlfriend. <laughs> Turn my boy awesome like that. <laughs> oh, and okay. also for a coup, your Zaki Chan got season two announcement as well. So. They better, or else shit's gonna go down. <laughs> Such is the stock market. Uh, it's already going down. See what you did? It's oh, already going down. Just like our god, we're gonna release him now. Yes, that's gotta, <laughs> that's gotta lead us on to our, to our, our first show, God of High School. And so this is um. So we actually have one more episode left. So, so we got this episode, and we got next week's episode. But a lot, a lot of weird things happen. This week and got a high school. I just want to say, like, that ending. Did anyone hear remind of Sephiroth? <laughs> that, that's why I just remind of just the, just the final form of Sephiroth. I thought of Anjuman, honestly. Uh, I thought he digivolved into Anjuman. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it looked like to me. Okay, I'm right. I can see that. See that. Dude, there is so much shit being thrown at us that, I mean, like, if they actually had, like, if they built it up and, like, introduce these characters that were all of a sudden just showing out of nowhere it would have more of an impact instead of getting some old guy that's supposed to be like the sixth of something basically just making crazy like a dude cra- crazy chess pieces in this guy that's jason okay <laughs> he's avenging his grandson <laughs> jason yeah man dude Shasha was like spot on when he said like shark guy was the villain so props to him man Dude, the shark guy was the villain. And, it wasn't an obvious to me. So there's well, attacking like, people. Before. I didn't realize he like because you thought the villain was gonna be like the cult leader. I didn't realize Hell the shark no. guy would like to take over the cult leader. So no, I'm pretty sure I said like that. Like he was gonna be like the fight, the guy they had to fight at the end of the season. Like he was gonna be like thought, the final. I thought boss. the shark guy was gonna be like a random like person, just just part of the cult. I didn't realize he'd be the actual final villain. So why is it that every villain we have now has like daddy issues? Because that's how I great have. the writing for the show is. Yeah, he does. <laughs> Remember his, his mom left him? He's like, sir, you're a loser. You don't want to be a loser like she is. Oh, yeah. And he's <laughs> like, oh. So now we know his motivation. <laughs> yeah. Like, God. no, I'm not a loser, dad. I'll show you. And then that's why he's a power-hungry evil guy. Yeah. Yeah. He couldn't have gotten into sports or business. <laughs> he somehow had to get into secret martial arts training and devour people. Yeah. Dude, if that old guy is like that strong, shouldn't have shouldn't his grandson been a little bit stronger? You know, life isn't fair sometimes, <laughs> right? Sometimes power doesn't get passed on to generations like that. Well, so. I like how this old guy he basically comes in there, basically does some crazy ability and then dies. It's like we, we knew nothing about this guy. He basically just saved he basically just saved Korea. That was about it. 
I mean, that's kind of what this series is about. Just yeah, no one yeah. matters, right? Like I have, yeah. to, other than the three main characters, like even then, I think even Jen is the only one that's somewhat relevant. But everyone else just gets like, like flown by. Like no one really cares. No one really matters. There was um, that episode where it's just like you know like early on, we kind of like uh, I remember Sasha referenced it before. It was like that uh, that wedding episode where mm-hmm. like they tried to build backstory and they're like, yeah, fuck it, action. And then they basically just c- cut everything from from like uh, backstories or anything else, and it's just like kind of just focusing on just animation. Mm-hmm. And that's yep. I like I, that, that. That's all I really got. I don't remember. I don't really remember too much that actually happened in this episode besides that. And how if they. You... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, like, my perfect example of this show being completely meaningless is in any other show, when a character reveals a power they or ability they've gained, you're like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. That shows how much they developed. Like, let's take Sakura, for example, right? Like, her ability to heal gets a lot better throughout the show, and it's gradual, and it makes sense. All of a sudden, Han shows up, puts, a, puts them in a blue bubble. He's like, oh, yeah, I was going to save this to show you later, but... That should heal them at the same time as protect them. And you're like, dude, when were you ever the healer in the whole group? Like, were you the tank? This makes zero sense. Like, that reveal was just pointless. I was like, uh, okay. But, you know. Well, it's like that, and then also, like, that, like, basically, like, where are they? Like, they were like, that one guy, like, tran- like uh, was a transfer or brought them somewhere else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, um, and they didn't really, like, I still don't know what this guy does besides just make, like, a giant, uh, Cross, I believe, I believe he's, Honk, the, uh, he's the summoner of the group. Oh, summon yeah. symbols. Yeah, yeah, makes yeah, sense to me, true. right? So he's basically a summoner, and also just sends, then they sends people to different locations as well. Mm-hmm. Yep. Uh, no, I mean, it'll kind of make, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no, I was gonna make a really bad joke. You go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah, you don't get that time then. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it would kind of make sense that this guy is like the master magician of the six uh, because his grandson is a magician as well, uh, even though he's a horrible magician. So yeah, I want to say that this is the the like the top tier magician of the group. That's why he was able to teleport everyone away safely. He was able to summon something that can contend with the god of uh, the the Nox group. So uh, yeah, they didn't really explain it, but that's that's what I'm getting from it. That. He's one of the six. We don't know if he's the strongest, but he's one of the six. I mean, he probably is. I mean, no one else could contend with Knox other than him. I have a feeling Jin's grandpa. You know, he's going to be one of them. No, because they did introduce all the sixes or all the six icons like way earlier. Yeah. Oh, just kidding. I don't remember that then. Yeah, they did. They they did that during. I don't know which episode it was, but I think it was right around the time where uh, Joker guy looked like he like lost his arm or something, and then he ends up oh. fighting another person. Yeah, they mentioned yeah. the six there. Okay. Yeah, I think it was before that one guy took in Jin for training, and then they advanced the story to the next tournament. I think that's yep. when they introduced everyone. Yeah, it's a good call. Like when everybody was training, I was assuming we're, we were going to get like flashbacks during like these fights, but we're not getting any of that backstory. Like we, because the Jin, you know, Jin, you know, trained trained with that one old guy. So like those you know like marks or whatever that he does, but we still don't know what they did though. Mm-hmm. And I, I thought they would have you know at least touched on that by now. Let's just say it's explicit, and there's a lot of blurring that would need to happen to show that. So that's gonna be on the DVD only version then. Yeah, Blu-ray edition. Yeah. See, Blu-ray see what he does is he makes he actually makes Jin travel to Japan, and he gets on a train with a bunch of dudes. It's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's called Jin Original Number Three. Grope me. <laughs> it's bad. Oh, God. Uh, I don't know about that. Uh, Sounds like some horrible hentai plot, but uh, I am intrigued, sir. Um, wow, I don't know how those two thoughts go together. <laughs> horrible, but intrigued. It's okay. Somebody has somebody has the spirit animal cracking. It'll be uh, right. it'll be lit from there, guys. So I figured out the way to make this show entertaining is in improv. There's this game we would do where basically you'd have everybody who's participating tear up a piece of paper, and on each piece of paper you would write a sentence or a word. And then you throw those pieces of paper on the ground and you'd have to start a scene by just picking up a random piece of paper and saying what's on that paper. So it, it could be like a rock and the next person could say, I love you. And then you have to pick up another piece of paper and you just, you just make up reasons for why you're saying these things. This is what I feel like this show is about is if you make up in your own mind, what's going on? Like what are the reasons for what's going on? The show's a lot better. So if you take shark park who, you know, let's just talk about like, Hey, 
maybe the show is trying to send a message that going to the park at night is a bad idea because you might get stabbed by giant teeth. Or maybe, um, what's his name? I don't even know how to pronounce his name. I don't pretend. Shark Boy. It's, the reason why he looks like that is he has a really bad case of syphilis. And he slept around when he was in college because he's pretty handsome. He's got blue hair. And now he's got like a random eye sticking out of his chest and teeth in his stomach. And, you know, he's he's just trying to get rid of the disease. He's trying to find a cure for it, but he can't. All right. So if you just make up random reasons for what's going on, you'll love the show. Uh, or you just be like Brian, just get always hyped up. You know, Dude, I think he's on to something. Yeah. <laughs> try it. Tr- try it for episode 13. I guarantee you. Right? <laughs> Well, it's going to be ridiculous because I, now I, I, com- I completely forgot like what happened before, but now it's like because uh, he he got the key and he like turned into some sort of like angel demi demon looking thing, right? Yeah. Dude, not even Brian can defend the show. Uh, he'll try. I feel like he'll I, I wanna, try. Yeah, I want to see him try because I don't know. I feel like he's still <laughs> like invested in this. Like he's too invested in this to say it's shit. You know. To be I fair, mm-hmm. To be fair, I don't think he's actually watched any episodes recently. I'm okay. uh, pretty sure he's probably still behind. Dude, um, he's, he's going to love it then. Oh, d- definitely. You better tell him that paper idea before you make him watch it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Brian, before you do it, buddy, I'm going to need you to get some paper, throw it on the ground, and then go from there. <laughs> yep. Just read them off, baby. <laughs> um, I do oh good. For this is like how the show's been going. I don't even know what's gonna happen. I it's basically, uh, I have, I, I don't I don't have any kind of like uh, uh, was it guesses? I have nothing. Um, because it's just like they they've been just kind of pulling everything from anywhere. I mean, the only thing we'd say it's uh, like yeah, kill you know the yeah shark, the shark guy who like got the key now. Just basically gotta kill him, and I'm assuming the cult's gotta get away, and then the rest of this. Shows gonna be about following the cult. Wukong's gonna come out. I guess. I guess got a high school tournament's canceled, so I don't even know it's irrelevant anymore. So, dude, it's, yeah. It's, uh, I'll no, come no, back to it. Oh, I was just gonna say it's. I think it's pretty obvious what's gonna happen. So the key's gonna unlock his ultimate angel powers, which in turn is gonna unlock Jin, becoming even more OP because he has that ability of really bad show writing where when something is more powerful than him he can just come up with a random reason for why he's able to match that same power oh yeah so you know so he's gonna turn into Jin the devil to counteract this angel and then he's gonna fight it to the death but before he kills it fox guy is gonna step in and be like no you're better than that and he's gonna be like wow thanks and he's like by the way your grandpa died he's like what and then a nuke's gonna drop like that nuke that they prevented hitting soul Mm -hmm. the one place where it's gonna end up happening is grandpa's shelter camp wherever he's being held prisoner but you know Grandpa lost his limbs, but somehow he can re- regenerate from a, a, an amoeba, a little cell. So he's going to regenerate, but he's going to become a star. And he's going to go into Jin's eyes and make him even stronger. Oh, and then Moon Girl is going to actually go to the moon and shave pieces of wood t- to make more swords. <laughs> and Han will become a registered nurse who puts people in the bubbles, accidentally suffocating <laughs> them to death while pretending it heals them. So... <laughs> I, I think it's pretty obvious, guys. Gotcha. Uh, you you have to go to the moon. If, <laughs> if, if any of that becomes true, the show gets put out of 10. I agree. I, I uh, honestly really don't have much more. I mean, I, I don't even, I can't even really comment on the story besides there is none. Animation's awesome, but yeah, the rest is yeah, pretty terrible. Yeah. I find but it hard I, to believe that Tower of God like executed better than this when this is the second one that was uh, animated. Well, I think True. With, I think with God of High School, like God of High School, like it started off like where we kind of knew like it was gonna have nice animation, um, but then I, th- I think it, it, it like attempted to try to build like a story or like you know character development and all that stuff. So I thought like okay, maybe this won't be so bad. But then they just kind of bailed on that aspect of it. Yeah. And then it just felt, basically they're just kind of throwing everything at us with any kind of like animation fighting that's possible, mm-hmm. and that's about it. Like I mean, I'm sure like we've missed. Because I think we talked about it before on previous episodes where they skipped so many chapters um, of material. Was it Brian that said that? Do, do you guys remember? Pretty sure, yeah. It mm-hmm. had to have been Brian just because no one else is following the source material. So That's true. Yeah. That's true. Maybe Andy? Maybe his friend? 
I, I think Brian was the one who was saying like they're burning through. It was an insane amount. I don't know. It was like 12 chapters or something per episode. And you're like, how is that even possible? Right. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know. I, for this show, I, I really don't have much more to say. We got one episode left. We'll see yeah. how it goes. Yeah, I, I really hope that the 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 finale does it justice because I don't have. To I want I want to I want to like it's yeah I want to like it so much and there was so much potential for them to end it like this. I I don't see them like continue with this like Manwa uh, adapting to an anime for uh, for me. I think maybe Noblesse might be the last one if it's this bad. Like I can't imagine them being like a giant cult following like Sword Art because it hasn't been like out long enough for them to have a, a giant following. So for for the sake of Manwas that deserve more than this, I hope that they they pick it up for the next. Uh, do you just not trust I, if, if if solo leveling gets the anime? Do you not trust them to do do it justice at all? Well, I think do, you, best... do you not want them to touch it at all? No, like not Crunchyroll. I would want someone else to pick it up if that's the case. Because if Crunchyroll fucks up three shows or three Manwas, like you shouldn't allow them to do anymore, right? Tower, like, Tower God, I don't actually think was that bad compared to these other ones. It's still a skip um, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it was it was okay, but then this was really but bad, right? Was. So if you have a if you have an okay one, a bad one, and another bad adaption, like uh, like what's the point of trying? You know, you're not obviously doing it right. So what's why? the other one? What am I missing? What's the third one? Oh, no, uh, noblesse, noblesse that comes out. In- oh, oh, that's right. Oh, that's not yet. Crunchy okay, roll yeah. confirmed. Right. They're all Is control. It? They're all control originals. So yeah, I'm not like, watching that. So, so it's like it's only being made because control, I guess, is mainly funding it so right i can't see any other manga is like getting the money for an anime well that that that's also because like they're doing the traditional route too of um of having like the air on broadcast tv even though like mangas aren't popular in japan so i don't really get that part like there's no point in airing it in japan you might as well just, just like do it for just a streaming site and just like not worry about the 12 episode constraint or 13 episode constraint I mean, even I said maybe Netflix, you know, like Netflix has their own original animes. Yeah. Like, I'm sure they can pick it up and try well, to do Netflix something. Netflix doesn't like really do originals, they just license it. They fund it and then they license it. Okay, but so. like, even then, I'm sure they can like throw enough funds if they see like potential in it. I so. mean, it's been hit or miss. So it's like it's almost the same yeah, thing. Yeah, I guess, that's, I guess that's true. Yeah, I feel like the hype is carrying the shows more than the actual delivery of said yeah. content. So right. that's the big problem. And. Well, Tower of God, we're all interested in season two, but at the same time, that's not forgiving it for all like the super slow pacing and just everything they left out as well. The same problems have just been amplified with God of High School, which to Ku's point, if that came after it, like I don't know if they did it at the same time and then just released it at a different schedule, but if that came after it, you're like, I oh mean, boy. They're all they're different um studios because I don't know the studio that made Tower of God. That's like that's like uh they're like a low key, so you don't really do much. God of High School is okay. Mappa, and so and Mappa has like been around for a while, and they're pretty big, and they're also doing yeah, uh, Attack on Titan season four, which which is a switch from the original studios. So does hmm. that make you worry, David, with them doing Attack on Titan no, four? Because I don't know, <laughs> because a lot of the good parts, a lot of the good animations, Attack on Titan was from with the original studio. Mappa is it's good, but like it's it's weird. It's a different style, so it's gonna be weird changing it. Okay. I got nothing more about the show. Yeah. Uh, we'll probably just say it for next week or for, for Friday for that season finale. Fair enough. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Yep. The review. <laughs> so that's gonna be it for God High School, and then we're gonna it next to Fire Force. Um, the good show. <laughs> So I was actually so I was expecting this huge like brawl with Burns <laughs> and yep. I guess it just went to, I didn't expect it to go that direction. I guess so I guess he is a good guy or he's not really with the church. He's still kinda sketchy to I, me, but like I say he's good. But so yeah, so yeah, like I mean, before before he was sketchy, but now I think it kinda like confirms that he's actually or like, at least he's like he's in the same area as Joker. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Where they, he's basically it sounds like he's in the same kind of part as Joker, like he wants to know, or he knows. Raffles, Raffles was a lie, man. This guy just mutated his Raffles and had a wife and kept his notes and threw everybody off. 
or his wife had the notes. Was it? his wife had the diary, right? Yeah, she had the diary. Yes, the wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, honestly, like I said, uh, I'm not a big picky guy as long as it comes to the story coming through and the animation serves the story at the end of the day. Because if you do the opposite, um, it can just be awful. Got so, it. yep. Um, but Fire Force is really, I got to give it a lot of credit. It's really turned it around. Like, I think the last two episodes have been great. Uh, the episode prior had a mix of great fight scenes and animation with good storytelling. And then this one was just getting to the core of the story where it's finally getting interesting. Where basically, um, the what, what's the main guy's name? The Shinra? Shinra? Not, not Shinra, I'm sorry. From the bad side. The uh, Evangelist? Totally. Evangelist. Evangelist, thank you. I was going to call him Evan. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Evans, Evan, it is. Where the evangelist was—he's like, you know what? We just made up all this stuff to throw people off and to make it a lot easier for them to believe in the things. You got Victor coming in, and you know his motivation is to discover the truth by any means, and not the truth that he's been told, but his truth. Like he's trying to find out for himself what's true. And that's getting him in some hot water where he could potentially get eliminated by the government. And so a lot of this, to me, has very real-life ties to church and state and government yeah. and politicians. So I think the story is finally hitting its stride, like even more so than in season one. So it was a dialogue-heavy episode, but I thought it was a very purposeful episode, yeah. which was... I was fine with it, yeah. It was really yeah. nice how we're finally getting like the connection between uh, like the cult and the Holy Soul Temple. Because it's been there all mm -hmm. along, and now it's, it's nice getting the revelation and just all the little connections. I hope they explain like the whole like other dimension that that part's still confusing. So I hope that's like better explained when it comes up eventually. But the comedy was still dead on too. Where basically it's just like oh like where it was I think it was like Benny Morrow where he's just like oh we're like uh where it's like oh I, I can't go over there because it's basically like the guy gets like the medic. That his like friend gets medication oh. from that place. He's like, he's oh like, yeah, did you yeah. Think about that before he's like, nah, I didn't think about it. I didn't think about it. <laughs> Dude, that's, that's crazy that, that um, that Hijima, because was it seventy percent of the population works for Hijima. That's that's crazy. Yep. They see like it's like seventy percent of the population works for, like, for Walmart or whatever or some other huge conglomerate that owns like everything. And then, well, just, and then that's like you, yeah. I mean, you look at our news sources. Disney owns ABC, ESPN, Marvel, Star Wars, like. More Everything. and more companies are just owning as much. Like, who are we? Like, uh, Discord's, I don't think, owned by any major company, are they? They're, like, they're, um, uh, they're not public, but like, they have a bunch of like investors and like, and okay. venture well, capitalists. But Amazon has taken, right? Yep. Twitch and Whole Foods. Like it on a, Whole Foods and Ring <laughs> and all these other places. There's even rumors of, about them buying out Target potentially, right? So you look at it and, Look at all the startup companies that Google's bought out with mm -hmm. um, Nest and Waze and Maps. I mean, Maps is their own, but I'm pretty sure they bought out they bought Waze. Waze. So yeah. it's it's a common story where basically you want as much information on as much of the public as possible. And it is very, very interesting what they're trying to pull off. I am just hesitant to say it's going to be super duper awesome. Because the show tends to go on streaks where it's like hot and then cold, hot and then cold. But if it sticks to this formula and to this story, I think we have something very, very interesting up ahead of us. Yeah, I guess like because they're they're now attacking Hi oh, Hijima. Hijima, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I think did you guys watch? The, we won't talk about the preview. Nope. But um, but they basically talked about how like they're what's it? They're not planning on killing Licked. Yeah. Um, nope. I mean, we, we knew that he's like, you know, he's sketchy and like he's probably um, sent to uh, Company 8 as a as a spy. But like, but he's yeah, changed. Yeah, but I mean, it's good to see that like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, he has his own thing going on. And of course, like he, you know, he put the whole truth on his report and now it's like he's probably gonna get killed. So it's nice. Like, and we'll, we'll see what happens for that. But it's, it's nice. Like, seeing how, it's not just like the typical, like, like. Like obvious, like traitor that he has depth to his character. So. I hope yep. he doesn't die. I don't think he's got to die. So, awesome. I I assume that Shinra's got to save him once like he brings him over. I mean, I would assume so. I mean, they're he's they're just fake. Fa uh, was a fighting normal businessman. How bad can it be? You know. Well, I mean, oh. like they have they have like bile <laughs> soldiers, or whatever. Like they, they're the ones. Oh, they, they, they did themselves. mention that, didn't they? Yep. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It's, not, it's not the scientists fighting. It's like their creation that's fighting them. And they're fighting that kid. Yep. 
Yep. That that crazed guy who looks like you, Shredden. Like if you're in Fire Force, that would be you. <laughs> the guy the, the guy had uh got frozen frozen and just shot. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That guy's uh that guy was pretty nuts. Not in a good was. way. Yep. Oh, I agree. Also, so this also had a callback to Dr. Giovanni, one of your favorites, Sash. I know with uh with uh the Lisa. Other girl, Lisa, yeah. Sorry, there seems to be like some fireworks going on. That's all good. Yeah, I was I was not expecting Lisa to show up and I guess like be part of like be part of um the team. Even though like, I guess she says right. she's still part of like the cult. Like I assume she's gonna call back to normal. And so New waifu. it's nice it's nice uh, it's nice seeing her in Victor in Vulcan, I mean. So Yeah, there's gonna be one more con- conflict I'm sure with her before she's completely healed. Um, but yeah, I, I I can see her coming back over. But then like, but then you know, Doctor Giovanni was he was heavily with Hajima because because he was with, he was with Company Five and they're the ones like affiliated with Hajima. So so I wonder if he's gonna show up um show up again. But I don't know how much Sasha, saying, I don't know how much loves him. God, do Dude. we even know where he is? Like yep. they mentioned somewhere in the cult. cult. No. Yeah. No. Gotcha. Dude, you know he's just chilling, polishing his little Doctor Giovanni suit. He's he's gangster man. He doesn't play games. Like even when he lets people escape, he's got them psychologically fucked. <laughs> like she was like, oh, I'll tell you. Ah, oh. like it's okay. Let's take her back, dude. I had no idea that was Lisa. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I remember her, bro. So like, well, because she had like longer hair. She looked more like the um, more like the biker look. Like but, yep, with the biker mechanic look when she was with Vulcan. And now she's like had short hair. So yeah, I didn't really recognize her either. Okay, man, I recognize my wife. Okay. But sure. This is what I'm saying. All the interesting characters, Victor, Joker, Geo, you, you give them time and you see how the show goes. So, like I said, we'll see. Plus, the fan service, it was okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, I thought it was pretty funny. So, I but was it was yeah. at least it wasn't that one chick. Like, I'm pr- I'm fine with it as long as it's not like related to that one not chick. Tamaki. That we, yeah. Tamaki. Yeah. yeah. Like it, it typically gets old. But I was like, eh, whatever. In this episode, there's so much good story actually being told that I didn't mind as much. But yeah. when it's like the heart of the show, you're like, oh god. Yep, I know. <laughs> but it's one of those like it's like those filler episodes, and that's what the gar- that's the garbage we get. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Fire Force. I mean, they're doing a good job. So hopefully, yeah, keep it up. Yeah, yeah. hopefully they can keep up. And then I'm pretty sure it's, yeah, I keep going for fall. So we'll be back talking about Fire Force every week. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, there will be no break. I'm Team like, Giovanni. <laughs> oh yes, I'm Doctor Giovanni. I'm here to help you, <laughs> dude. He would be the best. He'd be like the guy who gives like little children shots. He's like, oh, here's your lollipop, <laughs> and he just knocks them it's out. Just with the staff. Ah, <laughs> uh, Doctor Giovanni. He's a good guy. Yes, yes. Just All I know is doctors. next time I look for a raise, I'm going to use his tactic. Just kidnap the bird, someone that my boss likes and shoot them. <laughs> oh, you have 10 seconds or, to make a decision. Or, you know, hey, your, uh, your house is about to burn on fire. You, might, you better give me 100k, otherwise I'm not going to save you. God. Hey, man, he, he knows his ways. He should write a book after all this is said and done. How to, how, to, what? how to manipulate people using any force possible. Yep. Okay. <laughs> It's just going to be called One-on-One with Dr. Giovanni. (laughs) (laughs) I'd go to his book signing. Me too. Yep. We just don't know if we'd get out of there. (laughs) Shred has scars in his kidneys. Yeah, guys, it was great. I don't remember a damn thing, but it was awesome. I'm one. (laughs) Uh, Yep. Fire Force. Yeah, I think this is one of the few shows now I'm actually excited to actually see... uh, to see where it goes, you know, week uh, next or the week after. True the other that. ones were the other ones like Sword Art. We don't uh, talk about that here, sir. Yeah, yeah, those ones are basically was just like, okay, let's just get it over with. But this one, I actually want to see what's what's going on. Even though I was expecting a big fight, this one, I, I was, was perfectly fine. fine with the way it was. was oh god, like, I, I was fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm fine because because I think we were talking about before we were like, oh god, you know, Joker might die like this next episode or something. <laughs> and it ends up being completely different. Yeah. Even yeah. The, like their backstory too, with the team him and uh, Burns was I thought actually really good too. Oh yeah, yeah. I completely forgot about that. How they lost yep. their eyes. Yep. Yep. Yeah, they were they face like some like normal looking. I don't want to say normal, but basic looking creature. But then it had some some you know some back location bat shit. Because like on. somehow like that infernal gave him the Adola link. So yeah. yeah. Uh, but it, 
it also might have been due to the fact that they were weren't they inside the the Amat Terasu, like the the tunnels or whatever. Oh, maybe yeah, I forgot about that. So maybe it's maybe it's because like it was Infernal that escaped from that, and also since they're close to the source, that's oh, probably damn. what amplified. I didn't think oh, about damn. That, yeah. yeah. Oh damn! Damn, Doctor Kuovani. You guys don't pay attention, man. Oh, oh, that's oh, right. Oh, I didn't even think about that. Dude, I didn't I, think I got... about the name... Sorry, go ahead. No, nah, no, nah, you go ahead. Um, I was just saying that I knew. I mean, it, like we we have to see them go to like that other world, where mm-hmm. it's like the where just a bunch of eyes for moons for some reason, and then like where it just seemed like they're like with the stone they brought that just seems to be you know ever burning. Yep. Uh, basically, just yeah. kind of forgot to mention that, but. Oh yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, Venom and how they take a sample of him and then that little thing <laughs> oh, yeah. tends to like Friends. just st- stay alive and attach itself to whatever the. Si- how do they pronounce it in the trailer? It was like symbiote or something. It was like symbiote, I think. No, I symbiote? swear, it's, uh, symbiote, symbiote. There you go. Yeah, and I just cringed when they said it that way. I was like, dude, <laughs> no, you know, symbiote. Uh, was that you? Were, you were gonna say that, Sasha? Like, br- what's that? Before? Oh, when I cut you off. Oh no, I was just gonna say like Ku's uh, observations were great because I was definitely just distracted by them losing their eyes. I just you hear that screeching sound and his eyes going blurry. I'm like, oh, that's gotta hurt. <laughs> you have to think like, about it. you have to think oh, about yes. eyes anyway. Oh yeah, yeah, I'm I'm very sensitive about eyes. Like I can't watch that stuff. Like there's there's some horror movie where a drill goes in someone's eye, and I was like, nope, I'm out. Jesus. <laughs> yep. Okay. PTSD, I see. Oh, that makes sense. Indeed. Yes. That stuff. Yes, yes. Anyway, yeah, yeah, I kind of completely, completely forgot so, we didn't talk about that stuff, and then I kind of just made this longer. No, it's all right. Yep, so. a, a dollar link, guys. No, I just want to know more about them. I just want to see Joker, Joker, Benny Morrow. I want to see a spinoff with just them. Just fucking shut up. <laughs> well, what I thought was really impressive too was that uh, it looks like Burns and uh, Benny Morrow they're actually on par with powers. So uh, maybe <laughs> maybe that's why they're afraid of him as well. You know. That was like, even that was, that was kind of funny with Burns too when uh, Benny Morrow basically is just like it's like you know actually second thought he's like I'm good and Benny Morrow's like damn he's like I actually wanted to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> I could have been the yep. chance. See, when the good characters take focus, it's awesome. When you have a fucking mole with a scarf, it's <laughs> terrible. You just hate those. Bro, what are you gonna against the mole, man? <laughs> Bro, it's animals. adorable. Come on, stop hating yeah. on them. By adorable, do you mean completely annoying and useless? <laughs> we need someone to save our forest. Help! Yeah, shut the fuck. Like <laughs> that thing is uh, like Dobby from Harry Potter. You just need to burn it. <laughs> <laughs> just shove it in the fire oh and pretend God. it screams are a really bad music video. <laughs> we don't talk about IRL stuff here, sir. Get out of here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I, I got nothing else. Okay. Dude, yeah, that, that arc was a low point of the whole show, so that's why I hate that guy so much. I blame it, him. It, it can't go any. It can't get any lower than that. But I think. I think we should be fine. Yeah, Mister Ren, that's how you set up like death flags. So let's not say stuff like. Let's not say shit like that around here. Okay. But yep. I was worried that this episode was going to be death. Like, basically, there was going to be death brought, but there was none nope. of that. Nope, it was perfect. All right. Just, oh yeah, just let it go. Fine. I was fine. Let's just let it go. All right. So I <laughs> okay. think that's a good place to end for Fire Force. So, yep. Yeah. So we'll keep coming back every week. Or the I guess part two of the the season, so that's a bit for Fire Force, and then we're moving over to. So now we're gonna move on to ReZero. So this episode we had some you know some good developments with Aketna and all the Witcher Scar, and it was going pretty well. And then another fucking cliffhanger. <laughs> My God, man, this season just just doesn't know when to stop. Yeah, I mean at this point I think they're just going for the end all be all of cliffhangers uh for a season because we- next week is the last episode part one and i'm just gonna assume there's just gonna be another cliffhanger so uh... I'd, make a, I'd make a contract with echidna oh okay yeah about that uh i was with her until she pulled out the yandere act and then she lost me you know like i'm all for yandere's but I just didn't it feel just, it with her, it just, you know? It's just a little too much for you? For her, I guess for how she presented herself, I wasn't really into it. Like, I feel like for Yandere's, for them to be waifu, they have to do it in a certain way to to, to get me, like, on board, you know? Otherwise, I'm just completely, <laughs> like, torn away from it, so... So, simping from the kind of side, 
I actually like the way they um, did the revelation for her character because we've been saying this whole time during the season how sketchy she was. Like, we've been talking about mm-hmm. how, like, how the whole experiments with the clones and then, like, how she's involved with, like, Roswell and Beatrice and, like, how, like, we're assuming, like, her, the, the book that Roswell's following is probably from Ketna. So it's, like, we've, we've known she's been sketchy this whole time, but she's been, like, presented to the audience as, like, this, like, generally good character. So actually, I really like, like, how this basically, like, you know, this is the mo- the the moment of truth right here for her. Like, this is who her, who she actually is. And mm. even though I still would still say that, like, which you know, witches are not all bad. There's more, they're like more complicated. But like, this really, it really shows you you have to think twice about what you're doing with the witch. So, I really like that in this episode. I don't know. I'm just so conflicted right now. <laughs> Because we're not going anywhere. I mean, like, well, too. it's it's definitely interesting, right? I'm totally drawn in. But I don't know if Strand has decided watching this show or not yet. But I feel like if you're going to binge watch, you might want to wait until all the episodes come out and yeah. then just do it all in one go. I mean, that's free zero. And then, and then I'm just hoping that they do give you some kind of closure or some kind of direction that they're going in at this point. Because right now everything is so open-ended and everything is just so chaotic that you don't even know what's going on anymore, right? Like, all of a sudden, they're introducing all of the seven witches. Um, so Tella finally showed up. And we don't even know what she's going to bring to the table. Is she going to kill Subaru? Is she going to, like, force her contract onto him as well? Like, I don't even know. And I feel like she's already set up her contract with him yeah. somehow, some that, way. That's why I feel so like him. Right. Because that's how he already has his powers. So, yeah. I don't know. And then fucking they introduce Rem. And then, like, I, like, I had a, like... <laughs> blank mind when she came out i was like wait did she get revived somehow and i'm just like oh it's gotta be a witch right and then bam is the the witch of lust Play, so playing with your heart like they do with subaru for real uh <laughs> the bunny yeah. didn't return yeah they did they did but it wasn't it wasn't as chaotic as last sunday i'm, here. I'm just yeah i'm so i'm surprised like all the witches are there it, it seems kind of random that like nero just shows out of nowhere try, trying to stop subaru from in the contract i just i don't know what their motive is and all this or if like maybe a kind is like the really sketchy one or something but that's like that's more questions we need to ask like like what is like a kind of like true character like i mean I guess we know we know that she's like she's selfish because she's greedy she wants to have all this information she wants to satisfy her curiosity but we still don't really know like, i guess if her end goal is just curiosity i wonder why like the other witches were so they're so adamant about Super not taking the contract. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's it's kind of a mystery. Another, and then also, another question we asked for this season because now like, we don't have it was, enough. It was more that they, I think they wanted like him to actually know the truth before he decided before he made a decision. I watched it, guys. Okay, <laughs> nice. <laughs> but like, what, but then, like, what's the point, right? Like, if uh, like I guess they probably just want him to themselves, right? Because otherwise, why would you care about? What a witch, what another witch, and what this guy is doing. Like, wh- why does he pique your interest? Other than his ability to always come back, which is from Satella. Like, I don't know why they're so interested. And then the fact that all seven of them are able to pair up, which is kind of weird because I thought Echidna had to give up her host body. Oh, no. They're for saying them to appear in the world. They're saying she lied about it. That was JK. That. Yeah, that was JK. Yeah, she oh, lied about it. it. <clears throat> so, oh. again, more of, more of a, like questioning her character. It's like the fact that she lied or like not told super like that's just that's not telling super the whole truth that's why like that makes the contract even sketchier because she's not telling the whole truth about everything but she also says she's never lied to him well which she hasn't i guess but it's still being sketchy then because she because she told him that like, she told him like she needed to switch out of the witch which wasn't true so it's like that's one small part but it can always backfire when you're holding yeah. out we're not being transparent basically yeah i suppose yeah, I don't know. At least my man Subaru was able to confirm that, you know, the, the fake waifu wasn't real. So that's nice. <laughs> you know? Hey, you know, she's, I mean, she seemed like she was actually, like, you know, like excited and kind of like shocked that basically when, you know, Subaru was first saying, like, I was like, oh, yeah, I'll join a, I'll join a, p- a pack with you. She's uh-huh. like, oh, really? Like, it ba- like, she didn't seem like it was like one of those where she, she was like, you know, coming off as like, you know, like really, like, it uh, I guess like. It's, it didn't come off as malicious, but like, yeah. it still felt like. It felt it didn't feel good for Subaru. Like it just felt like there's like there's a bunch of catches in this contract that 
she's not telling the whole story about. I mean, if you want to bring Full Metal Alchemist into this, you know, it's equivalent, it's, it's equivalent exchange, exchange yeah. right? I mean, if you're going to give this guy like like an unholy, like all powerful ability, I mean, I guess it's fair, right? <laughs> so, I don't know. It feels like it, it feels like the show has like only gone forward like a day. <laughs> yeah, like, it, like there's no fucking progress whatsoever. I mean, loops, nope. man. That's what death loops do. Oh my god, dude! So many though. It's three zero for you. Yeah, but come on, like seven, eight deaths in one season, and it's only been two instances that he's been transported back to. It's it's kind of crazy how slow the story is paced at this point. I, I do think it like for this season, it's definitely like hella lore drop. I think that's kind of like the goal of this season. It's it's probably setting up for next season. Oh, uh, sure. that'd be my yeah. guess. Well, I mean, it's supposed to be 26, hope... 26 season, um, twenty six season, twenty six episodes. Yeah, twenty six episodes. Because oh, gotcha. I'm pretty sure people are saying this is arc four, and so I think people are saying this is like the longest arc of the light novels. So, how many arcs are out so far? I think like six. Huh. So, okay. At least that's what Reddit says. So we'll see. Yeah, I suppose. But uh, I really have to say much about this show. Yeah, I mean, we just—I just, just want to know how it ends, dude. Because there's just we're not getting, I, we're not getting, I don't know where you're going. We're not getting like, any where of that are we this, going with this it? first season. Well, I thought we had some sort of direction going on, and then like to tell you, I showing up the end just threw me off. I was like, "What are you doing here?" Like. I'm so I'm so confused how she even showed up in the first time, like I I just want to know this an actual connection between her and Amelia, because like I'm pretty sure that's Amelia's voice like voicing Satelia, and like it looks like her, like under the hood. So I need to know like, what's the connection here. I feel I feel they're related in a sense in some way because it's, I mean she was able to or, I mean what was it Amelia was uh what was it like basically where she was like possessed in a sense. We don't know that for um, sure though she was just missing so. No, that one time where he basically went to where he I think he walked in and, and Amelia was just like going crazy. She mm. had like purple glowing eyes and she just basically kept saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. I don't know if she was possessed. Like it's more like her mental st- I feel like that part was like her mental state was more like unhinge. I don't know if you could say she was too. possessed. Yeah, yeah, it's possible her mind just went boom. So we're not really sure. So like cause cause the first time Satelia showed up, like there's like I was thinking like maybe like Satelia possessed her body. That's why she looks like her. But then, like, but then it didn't explain why she's show, she's at this witch garden. So, like, yeah, there's gotta be some connection yeah. with like the way like, they're, because I I swear it's Amelia's voice voicing Satelia. So, is is Subaru able to make a contract with uh with um uh with the girl in the library? I'm blanking Beatrice? on her name. Beatrice. Yeah. I don't know. We'll. See. Because it made it kind of sound like he was, you know, thinking about you know, like uh, possibly. I don't know if it's like he wants you know, to trying save, to like you know save her. her. Yeah. yeah so, and I thought maybe like in a, in a in a way, if there's a, a way to make like a contract with her. I mean, she's a spirit, um, so maybe he could, you if, can. Yeah. So if he, because yeah. if he, could, I don't know. You have to if he if you have to be a spirit class to do it, or if anyone can do it. So if he can, then he'll probably like, make a contract with Beatrice to get her out. Here of He's, he is the MC, so he basically overwrites all the rules. It doesn't matter with him. It'll just work. I don't know about that, but I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, there's uh, there's probably other ways that they could probably, like, where he'd be able to do it. But yeah, I completely forgot that Beatrice was a spirit, so he could easily make a contract with her then. Which would actually be kind of cool. Because mm. Beatrice seems pretty, uh, Beatrice seems strong as well. Yeah. I'm really getting tired of basically, like, these uh, villains as well, like, where they show up like five fucking times and they're still alive like it's just like they just need to move on to like different people by now well i mean we well, people to, have actually to, killed this beetle to be juice. fair he's elsa. always we haven't seen elsa since season one for the first three they're, episodes they're basically yeah. repeating the time frame so basically it's always been the same five days over and over and over so that's yeah. that's why you only see the same villains over and over um oh also i don't know what episode this was but it was also fucking crazy where you're basically seeing like like the other like alternate timelines of Elf's basically when subaru dies episode yeah Oh, was it? Was it this one? Last the uh, one before. Oh, prior. Okay, I couldn't remember. And the call kind of like bl- blended in. I thought like, I was like, damn, that's that's fucked up, man. <laughs> You're just gonna show them like what's going on afterwards. Wait, wait, wait. Actually, was it this one? Actually, it might have been this one. This week's episode. I don't remember. Yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't remember. Yeah. So that's also <laughs> like 
Like that's also like cast away on Subaru's mind now because because he was, um, I forgot who told him. Like someone told him, I think I can't I can't told him that like he basically has unlimited uses of the the the, re, the retries, but like now that trial is supposed to make him like question like, you know, what actually happens after he dies. So maybe he'll take it like a little bit more serious and avoid deaths if he can. Yeah. <clears throat> oh hell no! Yeah, that's your power. That's what you got to do. You know. Yeah, I suppose. <laughs> well, he was traumatized by it. That's why he couldn't finish that second trial. It was. It was basically what was it like? Because the kidney is the one that's like keeping him calm, right? Or kind of keeping his like yeah. state of mind. Which again, it's really weird because she's helping him out at, at the trial, but like, but you know, if her character is, it's like, I guess she thinks of it as like, oh, we can't let. I think she thinks of it like I can't let Subaru die. Otherwise, you know, like this this thing I want will won't, like will be out of reach instead of like actually saving helping Subaru to help out his his cause well well the thing is um with that is like uh since she's like she's she's what you read right yeah yep okay i mean like it, the whole thing is basically every time he dies it's like a different timeline it's like more i guess like knowledge and it seems like that's like what she wants yeah. she basically just wants like all yeah. of that so i mean i i would assume like she'd prefer him to, d- to die more just because it'd that's, be that's that's like why but we're saying the downside of the contract like yeah like she wants him to die more, but he's also keeping her his mind, I guess, like, you know, sane in a sense. So I mean, it's it's you know, he can keep dying, but at least his mind will stay sane, you know. I don't know. Yeah. What, I don't know what to say. Yeah. Sane. He's so it's traumatized. It's so painful for him too every time. Dude, yeah, dumbest like, death. The bunnies. That was so fucking stupid. Both both bunnies. Stupid. Oh, I don't know about the stupid part. Stupid. That's it's pretty gruesome. Oh god, dude. It's basically. <laughs> Dude, Taylor, it's Taylor laughing like crazy. It's, it's, it's she was laughing, laughing. Yeah, it's like a, a, a bunnies, man. Really, bunnies, dude. It's it's one of Gluttony's <laughs> monsters, man. You gotta take it seriously. Yeah, I know. Dude, Gluttony, we're, we're, we're going, crazy. we're going from the huge white whale to a hard army of bunnies. And I thought what the Gluttony. third thing was. I think that farther with, yeah, the third thing was they were watching yeah, we'll actually, yeah. Like when I first saw the scene, I thought it was funny too with the bunnies popping up, but that was because it reminded me of uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> I do remember you talking about that last but, time. Yeah. Well, like unless she's seen that or that's what she remembered too. Like I don't see why it would be scary. Like it would be surprising for sure, right? Like how are these are so dangerous? But then when you see like just millions of them just popping up and just instantly sl- uh, slicing through you, like and that's pretty intense. And the fact that you don't really die instantly. And they're constantly just gnawing away at you. I, I would imagine it's like a million zombies just biting you and just ripping you to shreds. But that's zombies, though. These are bunnies. But I mean, but same thing, right? Instead of like a bunnies. giant bite, it's like millions of smaller <laughs> bites. So it might be more painful in a sense, kind of like torture. Since no. you don't really die for like right away, also you get reincarnated, still feeling uh, that that moment when you did die. Well, so. the, the thing, the thing that I thought was dumb in that sense is that when the bunny bit him, it like lopped off his hand. But yet they're nibbling him afterwards like they're basically the bunny's just lopping off like one bite and the hand's just flying but yet it's just basically like after that they're just nibbling on them I mean, it's like it's really for, i mean it's for dramatic effects redden so yeah i know i know i know you really want to nitpick that no but no maybe they're using their abilities you know like maybe one of them has a slice and dice effect so, <laughs> so, so maybe. maybe they have they have one of the tools from from uh food wars i think it's possible oh god whatever add me a logic anyway i'm good so I'm just going to assume next week's episode is just going to be a cliffhanger. And then we'll have to wait three yeah. months for winter to start. And we'll I'll, I'll give my this, thoughts to Go through for all the... this all over again. So Yeah, for next week, I'll give Mike my thoughts just kind of like of the season as well next week. All right. Okay. What is next? All right, so yeah, that's going to be it for ReZero. And then we're going next to um, Stafu or Oregaru. Oh, yeah. Dude. Fucking <laughs> no! This, yes. this, this, you didn't like was, it? this was just an uncomfortable, awkward, cringe episode. It Why? just felt so weird. Dude, it was just weird. I, I, it's just like it's weird. All of a sudden, seeing like them try like attempt to throw like like romance elements in, and it, it just felt kind of uncharacteristic. It just felt it was just really weird. Uh, it also, like it felt like they were trying to like actually have like a neutral, happy ending, but when like, in reality, there's no way in hell like Yui would really be a part of that. Like, it's just, like, you know, with all those things, like, it's just, I would, I don't know. I, I just, I just found, like, really hard to believe, like, where she would just, like, be a, still, like, a part of, like, that crew. Even though at the end they kind of made it sound like, oh, like, she's still going to fight. But then, like, uh, that's kind of a weak, that's kind of a, a weak, um. I don't know. I just think she part. really values her friendship with Yukino. 
more than her feelings for Hachiman, so... Uh, eh. My favorite moment, though, was definitely with the teacher. That actually teared up, like, slightly. <laughs> that, like, that, that moment was just like, oh, dude, 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 if only, hinting, if only. Hinting so hardcore for the teacher parent. Uh, cool. What are your thoughts on that, that scene? Like, that wow. whole thing with it. That was probably the best moment for me in that episode <laughs> when she fell on top of him. And there was just that moment of, I guess, sexual attraction, you know, <laughs> that they had with each other. Mm, I felt that. It's right. like that callback from episode one. You know, youth is a lie. Oh, yeah, that was good. Dude. I, I, like when I heard that, I was like, yes, yes. I don't know, like, it, it was just, like, by far, like, I love, like, the stuff, like, with Hachiman and the teacher. Like, honestly, like, really, the banter with Hachiman, a part of it, like, for anybody, just, you know, made that. But, like, definitely, like, the banter between him and him and the teacher is, is up there. But I still like, you know, him and Yuroha is, like, my favorite. And, like, even, like, Yuroha now with, like, his, his sister. You like her oh, sister, my God. his sister calling her out as trash <laughs> and saying, oh, hey, you two, you, oh, you fit well with my brother because you're both equally trash. <laughs> you like that, trend? I thought, damn, savage. Dude, it was just, it was awesome, man. It was like, it almost made me like wish that they would actually have like a, like a continuation of another season with yeah. his sister actually a part of it. <laughs> like with that whole, like, cause like, cause like this, this whole thing missing the group element. Like, even though like I was trashing on Yukino, like it was like still, it was the best with all of them together. And they were always yeah. removing one of those elements. So that's the, and like, so, I, yeah, that, that's what I was saying from, I think last week's where, yeah, yeah. Like, I'll say like in the general, like, season, like series review, I guess it's a series finale, like, the show yeah. does its best when it's the the group and social relationships, and yeah. it just felt weak on the romance. Yeah, I definitely agree. It's I don't know, it's like so that was like even more excited with just like with how Komachi and uh, and Iroha were like re- like 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 acting. I was like, damn, like that that whole banter back and forth would be so good too, and we get robbed, we get robbed. <laughs> uh, I I don't know. It's like I don't know. Like, overall, like I mean. Uh, I mean, I just kind of like knew my kind of like thoughts about this season. I I just felt like the like the the arc was weak. Um, I still don't see like because now I kind of got I got over with with the mom part of it, but then I just kept thinking like, why the fuck is her sister still here? Like, because it's like because like her mom has an excuse, but why are you here? It's just like I swear like she doesn't work. So Bro, it's just... I got I got I got to add though, uh, Haruto, man, she's pretty thick. That one cut, <laughs> that one shot of her from behind Walking in that dress. Away. Yeah, yeah I was like, oh man, this girl is... Ooh. Okay, so setting you degenerates aside. So, since someone explained, like, <laughs> so, because her sister, it's like, what was... I'm still trying to understand, like, yeah, her role in this story. It's like, does she really... I still can't understand. Does she really like her sister and she's trying to, like... Is she, like, unhappy with her life and how she was treated by her mom and she's trying to stop her sister from going that route? Is that her thing? I still, like, don't kind of get it, like... Dude, Who knows? Well, I didn't read the either. Really like I said we were gonna. So I didn't either. I was like, I, so I was done with the show at this behind, point. I, was, so. I just felt bad. So that's like the one thing I, I it's like that, and I guess like the genuine part too. But it's sorry, Kugu, go ahead. No, I just want to say like, yeah, it wasn't really. I don't think it really matters to be honest. Uh, She's just a big all... part of the story, though. So I mean, the only part I thought of her was basically to push Hachiman. That was it. She was, I, yeah, I she, she was pushing him hard in last season, so she, she yeah. is a big part of the story. Yeah, basically. But why though? Like, why are you there? Like, it's just. I mean, no, I would assume she cares. Be... I would. I would assume she cares for Yukino. Because, like, why would she be doing this? To be fair, it wasn't for her. I. I don't think this would have ended. I think he would. Hachiman and the others would have constantly just like. Said friend. Like had beat that, around the bush. Had, had yep. that facade. The whole instead of yeah. the genuine thing. Right. So if it wasn't for her, you know, I don't think anything would have like advanced at all. So I think mm-hmm. that's fine. Other than her involvement with like the prom and the other stuff, like with the PTO and whatnot. Like, yeah, I get it. She's not really uh, important in those matters. Like, she doesn't need to be there. Other than the fact that she's like learning to take over the business from her parents. So that's the only reason why I think of that she can be there. But yeah, if it wasn't for her though, like the plot wouldn't advance at all. So it would have been just like Hachiman, like. Always oh, walking away while you know has her fingers gripped onto his jacket. It's just, it's just been like right. That. I wonder. Right. I wonder if there's a sense where if her sister actually like either wants a job, or wants to, or doesn't want it, and actually wants to push you, you know, in a sense to take it because maybe she wants to do something else. Because so since she's been pressured by the parents, uh, it was most of her life. It sounded like maybe yeah. she just wanted to break out of like, it. And she feels had... like the perfect child of the family. Yep. So yep. Yeah. So that could have been it too. Yeah. For sure. But overall, I mean, for me, I still definitely 
uh, enjoyed the second season a lot more. I mean, I threw, I threw like a bunch of things that I wasn't kind of like, even prepped or ready for. Because like going from the first season, I'm just expecting, oh, just you know, some just a bunch of stupid humor, just have fun. And it was the complete opposite of that, where it basically was like all serious. It was dramatic. It was I don't know, it just like it was a bunch of like kind of like just you know group growth, character growth. Um, I actually especially like for Hachiman. the first season the best, just because like I think it did it did its best when it was Hachiman trying to explain the group dynamics in like you know coming of age story. So I think yeah, that's where it, it really excelled cool. best. I think it's just because second season. I think it's just because like. I don't know if it's like the anime. It was like, I mean, for translation, and like, but I think it's like the anime probably caught a lot of things from the source material too. That like, they didn't do a good job of explaining like the whole like situation, and also like part of like you know Japanese culture, like where you don't, you're not like um, expressing your feelings as directly, and like, and it's hard for people to say how they feel. So there's like there's that part. So it's like it's all these different parts that made like that second season confusing. If you're watching this as an anime only. And if you don't like understand like Japanese as much, and you don't want to keep going to Reddit, <laughs> <laughs> so. I mean, I don't know. I think it's fine, right? First season was kind of like the honeymoon phase where everything's new, everything's really lighthearted. Uh, there wasn't really any like tense drama with season one. I think season two is when they started introducing more of the mature topics and the more um, uh, drama that like went over to season three. Um, so I guess it depends on what you prefer, like what you wanted from this as a rom com. I guess yeah. I, I, think, I think I just built up Hachiman too much as a character because season one mm-hmm. is where he really shines, and season two is when you see the flaws. In his case, where I guess it's like it's good. I guess it's that's good writing when you want see you don't want you don't want perfect characters, but it's just like it it wasn't well explained as an anime. So I guess it's where right. it all falls, and then like season three just continue on of that, like where it, it didn't really explain much and also it just felt like the prom arc just the whole problem was just weak so one thing i have to say one thing i have to say that did progress really well from season one to three is just hachiman's growth as a person yeah like i want to say that's probably the only thing that like progressed well this whole season uh like i said season one was very lighthearted. you got these a bunch of like you got a bunch of immature people thinking that they know it all until like real life hits them and they have to experience what it's really like you know in the real world and then season two, it's when the drama starts kicking up, and season three is when you see closure. So, uh, yeah, plot wise, I maybe I agree with David. Maybe season one was the best, but uh, I, I do appreciate how uh, the author was consistent, and he actually showed growth with the MC. Yeah. Oh. I mean, that's why Hachiman was embarrassed by that the line from season one, because that's like, because <laughs> that's like him being an edgy teenager, and now he's. <laughs> A mature adult in a relationship. He's, he's grown up. He's grown up so much. Yeah. yeah no, the show's the show's always been about Hachiman, though. Like everybody else has been backseat. This is this is Hachiman's show. True. True. That's why. Like, yeah. I wish Yukino had more of a a role because like because I re- I still really like like their banter, it's like season one and then like and then season two where like it was less because they got more serious. So I just that's why I also I just, miss about season one. It's like it's like just their their banter and I really wish. I wish it was more because you was Yukino had problems making friends too. So I really wish the show was about like Yukino and Hachiman figuring out how to be more social, not just not, not just like relationship, like like it didn't have to be romance at all. Just like just showing them how to be more social. Like I'd rather uh, I would I would have actually had it more probably the, that than romance because that's uh, what it seemed like. Because we didn't have much romance at all until yeah. like these last two episodes. They could have easily kept it like basically them just because they were both fucking awkward as hell. And then they, it could have easily been just like how, you know, just making friends. Because Hachiman was making those strides this season where he'd be just randomly asking people, you know, like, hey, do you want to do something after school? Or like where he would text Yui when he's like in the same class. And she'd yeah. look over like, what the fuck is this guy doing? Yeah, but we, we didn't then, see any of that of Yukino, like how like no, didn't people anyway, hate no. her just because she's like, she's like, I don't know. People think she's a bitch or whatever just because like she, 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 calls, it, very, very she, well. calls, she calls out people on their bullshit, which I enjoy. Yeah, she they, they they didn't really portray her very well this season at all. I definitely do miss the group dynamics a lot. Um, that that made, what made like the so like the show so good. Um, cool, everybody. Sorry, cool, you, <laughs> yeah, I, you. I, I think we kept cutting you off. Yeah, no, it's fine. Uh, well, I just want to say that you know it, it is a rom com, so there has to be some kind of romance Doesn't about it. Have to be rom com. Yeah, it could it could have just been a comedy. Rom com. That's why it's called a rom com. Yeah, well, it's not a comedy. It's not a slice of life. So. It, it was bound to have something like this. Follow labels like that. I don't know. <laughs> it could have been just a dramedy. A dramedy? If that's yeah. a thing. 
<laughs> but um, no, going back to Yuki, you know, I just remember, yeah, like how season one, um, because she was they were like, at the, the camping trip and like, um, basically like Yuki, you know, like was they were late late at night walking and like Yuki, Hachiman asked, "Why are you out here, Yuki?" You know, she says, "Oh, I was talking with a blonde chick," and I was like arguing with her until I made her cry, <laughs> and that part just like the initial more of that where it's like she just has trouble yeah, making yeah. friends because she's so she's so like vulnerable everything. <laughs> Yeah, they kind of bailed on that, and then basically just kind of made it with just like their like the the, the love triangle, which which is why I didn't, kind of I didn't, which is why I didn't care much about Yui as much because like because just season one again it just felt like it was supposed to, it should have been about Hachiman and Yukino being more social. It just felt like Yui was just there just to be love triangle because I mean I mean she's good she's there as the normal person as the foil, but like I still it it felt like a distraction from trying to solve like Hachiman and Yukino's problems. No, I feel like she had to be there too to kind of help. Like, uh, what's the word? Yukino in it. Kind of just show like the different sides out there, you know, like have the different I interactions. Mean, yeah, it's good as a foil, but I don't know. I feel like I still There's prefer to go more all in on Hachiman and Yukino. There were still a lot of times though too where Yukino didn't know what to do, and basically Yui was like assisting in a sense, basically kind of right. guiding her on like what, you know, what to do. Yeah, because they had to be exposed to something differently. Because if you think about it, Yukino and Hachiman, uh, I, I can kind of see why they kind of made Yukino a little bit weaker because this show is about Hachiman. Uh, so they had to make sure that he was the main focus and that he was the one that was growing throughout all three seasons. And if you have two characters that's basically the same thing, it kind of makes it kind of boring in a sense, right? So you have to introduce these different characters. And I think with with Yui being there, Iroha, like even Saki, the teacher, and Haruno, uh, like being exposed to different types of personalities and like having Hachiman and the others kind of like experience that themselves to kind of like differentiate what's what's real, what's not, what they like, what they don't like. I think that was really important. Like maybe it was really subtle and that's why we don't really appreciate it as much. But I, I think it was fine. I think the cast was, was really all like uh, well written. But, I, uh, I wish they were in it more. Right, but you can't have everything, sir. Yeah, Otherwise, you have no. two, four, you have, five, six. No, if you have everything, that's the top tier show right there. <laughs> that's an S tier. This only gets A tier. Uh, uh, no. I mean, let's, let's, let's be realistic. Though. I think it did fine. It's just, but I think we were just hyping it up too much because we were, we waited like four or five years for yep. season three to come out. Yep. So it might have been a nostalgia like thing, but I don't. I think it. I think. It did I mean, fine. I don't want like, nostalgia. Like I, I rewatched the whole season before it aired, so. Yeah, I was. I, I definitely, I definitely hyped it up way too much in my head. And, uh, yeah, I don't know, maybe. It's like the but, your name effect th- for th- me. Then again, it's like the reason why I was following uh, this show so closely in the first place was because of the Reddit threads, because they they explain a lot of the things I wasn't getting at the time. So I relied heavily on them. So not reading them this time, I think hurt hurt me as well. So. Yeah, I'd imagine if you if you liked the show. Uh, I think you would really love the light novel. That's what I'm getting. Yeah. But uh, uh, it's, it's I'm not gonna read it. <laughs> I want to read it eventually. But so eventually, like mm. it's hard because I don't want to put my definitive thoughts just on the anime. I really want to go deeper into the show, and I really want yeah, just to look at the original novel, the light novel, and just compare it to the anime. So because we don't even know if this is the the actual like if it's following the, the source material, right? I would assume it is, because it could be an anime original ending. Maybe. Um, I, don't I doubt it. it. I doubt it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we can we can update for next week's podcast, but I I, I doubt it. I doubt it. Yeah. Right. So. <clears throat> so I guess like. Yeah. That's all I got. I mean, it's. I, I'm I'm glad we were we we were able to get the third season, but I'm just kind of disappointed. In, like, I guess how... I'm glad we, I got we I got the you know pairing, even though it was obvious, but it's like I felt like it's. Just, I think it was just weak, so. But uh, what would you guys score it? I think there's in probably like eight. I want to say seven point five. I'll probably say eight. Uh, I'd give it an eight out of ten. I believe I gave it a seven because I had this shit so hyped in my mind. <laughs> like I, I was uh, so uh, basically, I'm giving like this show like uh uh. The seven is mainly just for like the Hachiman carry, and then just like yeah. the very kind of like side bedroom. Seven point five. I like my point five scales. I feel like I feel like it gives it's more accurate. So I'll I bet seven point five. That's fair. That's fair. I bet Seren's only giving it a seven because it wasn't the the ship that he wanted. <laughs> See, honestly, like I, 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 trash. After, 
after seeing that episode though, like where I just felt like it was really weird to actually finally see like like rom- like romance elements. I thought like, Dude, this just feels. I just felt like it was like damn, this is not like you know sna- this is not snafu, and it just felt weird. Like I, I just kept thinking like damn, like this would just feel weird. Like if, if it was if, even if it was like with the, um, uh, even if it was with you know Yui or Iroha, I think it would still feel weird just because it's like we've been so used to them basically just kind of like you know going over you know how, uh, or beating around the bush mm-hmm. where they weren't really like saying it itself but then while all of a sudden when it was out there i'm like ooh, this is weird that's this why, this doesn't feel like snafu that's because it's just because it's anime and shonen it's like they have to have a romantic pairing it could have been like non-romantic like it could have just been two <laughs> friends like trying to be more social it, so. or a harem you know why can't we just yeah, have too, more? Yeah. Or it could have been like, oh, where it could have been, it ended, and it's like, oh, five, like, you know, four years later, and it's Hachima with the teacher or something. <laughs> okay, well, that's not what I was talking about, so. That's oh, what I was talking about. Oh, well, I know what that, sure. Yeah, that's, <laughs> so, so that's our, that's the series finales for, for Snafu, so. Rest in peace, man. I will miss you, Hachima. <laughs> He'll always be in our hearts. He'll always be my number one favorite character on my anime list. <laughs> So I remember we're next to this is Stratton's favorite show, Sword Art Online. I don't know. We already done with Sword Art. Oh no, 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 no we're doing review. Review. Just our okay. thoughts of the season. This oh is, my god. Is, oh god. Are you? Are you? Do part, we really need to do this? Is this is part, 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 last week? part two of the part two of Alienization. Fifty-two episodes of this god. arc. Was this worth? Holy fuck! That's hard to believe. Jesus. Was this I... worth fifty-two oh. episodes? No, I think it was good at twelve. <laughs> you, should have, you should have just left it at twelve. So. See, like, like the, the arc was like when when the Kirito first went in there with Yujio, like that that seemed so strong. Like it was actually like going well. We saw character development with you know with somebody else besides Kirito, and then they you know of course like as the the sword art guy always does yeah. kills him off. Um, Would you believe that there them. are there are people there are sword art fans who consider this still like the best season? That's awful. Oh yeah, I've seen the comments. I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, some guy said best ending to the best arc ever, and I'm just like, he's no. a Battlestar Galactica fan. No. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, God, think, I think I think, so we're, I think there's all in agreement. Like it's the whole the initial premise started off interesting, but then of course like the author couldn't like keep it consistent, so couldn't hold it. Yeah. Like. It, yeah, it's just oh god. It's like it's, it's like, like it's like season one when he jumps to floor seventy five of Aincrad. It's like you had all this good potential and lore, and you just jump you just jump straight to whatever. Yeah. Like, <laughs> like we had such a good lore of like the knights, and then we just go straight just go just to killing and master, and that's only part one. And then part two was just see, just like I guess like if you're talking about this season specifically, like it's part of like the whole match against the emperor, where it's like what a one day battle. This whole like. <laughs> 24 episodes was one day basically of just invading and then like and then just doing doing so invading getting the emperor getting that god accounts in and then getting the all the na korean chinese players in killing them and then booting everyone out and then finally killing the emperor (laughs) and saving alice yeah it was uh yeah, I, I think there's also part of it too at the beginning of the season where it's just like you like you know followed the Reddit thread, uh, the Reddit hype. Where everybody was saying like this this arc is so much better than everything else. You know, they, they yeah, everyone's saying blah, this blah, is supposed to be redemption for the the author. Oh shit! Oh shit! Well, it, at the beginning it, it was like I believe it started strong, and then like I think then it, he he started like losing his way when he just started like coming up with a, just just random nonsense. Uh. Were you gonna say something, David? Oh no, because I cut out. But um, oh, I'll okay. just say um, yeah, because I mean, if you go back to the the, because I think because because what was it? I mean, because the show started before the podcast, but like so part one yeah. was like wait fall fall of last year, where like we um, where basically because part one ended with just like Shinon like getting the God account. But I mean, oh, yeah. <laughs> but like, if you wanted to talk about like the whole arc in general, it's like it's just really weird how yeah we just went from knights like the jumping ship from knights to administrator was too fast. So yeah, but I mean, I just I guess I want to keep it mostly 
exactly this. I guess I guess you do both. I I was planning to do mainly this this part two, but if you want to talk about the whole arc, that's fine too. Um, I mean, nothing to talk about. I don't like, really know how much more there is to talk about. It's I guess I guess, it's I guess like, like just like the whole. This will see the ending to the arc, and just like the whole ending sequence was just so weak. Like, like the the fight with like Emperor Vector was just weak. Besides Ricoli, but I'm just saying like Kirito's fight was just weak. Just like the whole, they helped make the whole big deal about you need to get out of there. Otherwise, you're gonna be trapped for twenty years. That didn't do shit. Kirito survive. Uh, I have a question, David. Um, was this supposed to be like the original like ending to Sword Art before they decided like later on to make like more? I think so. Was this supposed to be like think, the ending think, to Sword Art? I think the author was saying yeah he was planning to make this the, the the last arc of Sword Art. Okay, so I have a lot of issues with that because there's still like so many things where they they made a copy of Kirito. They did nothing with it. They basically just said there's a copy of Kirito, but that was they they well, didn't actually go more into depth about it. To be fair though, like you say copy, but I think it's like I think I think the fuck fights still have normal human lifespan so i think he will have died by the time they went back no because they didn't mention he's the first human to survive more than 200 years so Kir- the, might original be Kirito is, the original Kirito the original is for his right. his his consciousness in his human body but they made a copy of his fuck life after he left for right. 200 years so i don't think that i don't know i don't i can't fight i say logic I don't know. It's okay. <laughs> no, I don't mean, know. Like, like I said, I guess it doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. Show. I shouldn't it, be arguing. It doesn't matter. The the well the the one thing is like I kept like we kept thinking is like okay at least it has like like in, like uh, insane animation we're at least gonna get some crazy fights because like <laughs> the fights with like the knights before like those fights were so awesome yeah like uh even the fight with the administrator like minus like the sword CGI, creature yeah um yeah um like even like the animation with that fight was awesome and then then we get we we started off this season strong with uh. With uh with Berkeley, uh or Berkeley, and then just like we got like you know as, as Brian put it like those intense like dark thick lines uh, thick lines Them thick uh, lines baby yeah. and we kept thinking like damn if this is what they're gonna do for just like you know like for him like you know what the hell they're gonna do at the end dude like and then they did nothing yeah like like besides the five, give the, probably people seizures like the five pole just, just I don't even, I don't even remember how it happened besides the tree thing like nothing cool happened with pole. Nothing. And, Nothing then, at all. and then we're thinking like, okay, well, if they didn't do anything for Paul, they're saving, they're saving all their, all their, their budget for animation for you know the emperor. Nope, just five minute seizure. God. Well, the one, the, I think the only part that was cool about the Poe fight was Asuna's fight or Asuna's part with Poe, but it didn't last very long, and it definitely was no Burkholi oh, moment. Yeah. And then like when you talk about Poe, just the whole like, like AG showing out of nowhere from Ornal scale. <laughs> That was so random, <laughs> and it's like, and also like, if you didn't watch the movie, it, you'd be so like, it's so weird like having. Who the hell are these people? Like, yeah. I guess like I think I guess I missed a part where you said it was canon, but like it's I didn't expect it to actually show up in the story later, like how. Yeah. Like, I didn't. I don't think anybody did. Because, I guess like I don't know. I don't know, like how other people was like for me. It's hard for me to follow anime movies. I usually don't because it's I don't know like when they come out or like, when they get sub whatever. So it's hard. So. Even though, like, that's more of a trend recently, like how, like, Main Abyss had the sequel movie and then we're gonna have the Demon Slayer sequel movie. But it's like, it's so hard to, like, follow movies as canon. We're so used to them being filler. Oh, so, yeah. Like, definitely. It's, it's so weird just having, like, AGV canon and just come out, like, out of nowhere. Yeah. There was just, it was just really bad. I don't know. It was just, it's just bad. I mean, it was not even just, like, overhyping, it was just bad. Just it was a uh, it's just, just wasted potential is what I thought. Like even yeah. even like even if you're a sword art fan, I, I can't see how you're not like disappointed by the ending. Like it's just this wasted potential. Yeah, like because I thought like um look at the last episode, I was thinking like okay, they're they're at least gonna have like some sort of redemption by you know going back to the world and just seeing what everything is at. Instead, we just got we just got like, a spaceship fight. Like this is not like a like this. Like a, I don't know if it's a one or I don't think it's Culverworks. It might be a one, but like this is not a small indie studio. This is part of Anaflex, the same studio that owns Ufotable, and they're all they're all under Sony. So this is not like a small company. They have the budget for all of this, and like it's just wasted. Like and they and Sora makes so much money anyways as the property, so they could they don't even have to take any outside money. And they could take all the money they made from Sword Art for the past like five, six, seven years. And put it on here, and they they didn't. 
Uh, the only thing I can think of is maybe COVID kind of affected work progress and quality. It was delayed. Like, it was supposed to come out in spring, and then it was delayed to summer. But Right, but COVID was still happening the whole even, time. Even so. with COVID, it's like, I think you still have, like, a storyboard and, like, scenario, like, writer. Mm. I don't think that would change. I think a lot of those things can be done from home, though. I don't think you... I, I don't know. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there. Like, maybe yeah. that's probably the only thing I could think of that would cause it to be so lackluster. Um... But, um, yeah, I think I would only cause it to be that close if it was, for, it was like just animation, but it was just it was more it was just like we didn't get a proper fight, so I I it's more I played more of the storytelling and scenario, and maybe oh well, I mean we we knew story was gonna be weak from the get go. <laughs> I mean if you were expecting good storytelling, uh, I mean not you, story. I, 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 I guess, for, for me for me scenario then like at least like fight choreography, like I was I was, I was expecting more for the, the emperor fight, so. I don't know. And then there's also just, and then just the ending too. It's like the whole ending was whack. Like disappointment after disappointment. I could have written a better storyline. I could have written a better <laughs> ending. I don't know why I was expecting more. But the, he did do something that blew my mind. That Battlestar Galactica ending. That that blew my mind for sure. But yeah, other than that, this guy hasn't done anything impressive to me, like at all. This this, this whole second part of Alizization. You know, so I, I I didn't know what to expect. I was just watching it for the the shit talking. So yeah, um, and then they had they had to get my hopes up with Broccoli, but yeah, it blows my mind that you're gonna get the side character all this time and effort and do your best scenes with him, <laughs> and you could even do that for Kirito in the end. Like that that blows my mind. So makes no sense. Yeah, what what you guys rate it? I don't care. <laughs> Probably a five. Okay. I don't care. NA out of 10, sir. Yeah. NA I, out of 10. I, I actually gave it a 5. Yeah. Out of 10. Yep. Yep. I gave it a 5. Um, I, I, basically, for 5, it's his Man, average. It's like, I, mean, it, it was... I can't even like shit on Sora for just on the standard Shonen stuff. It's just its own special type of shit on. It's like. I can't. Yeah. I don't know. Like, if you're like a. Sh- if this is like a typical show, I can understand being a fan because, like. I can still I can still enjoy these type of like just shows where I where I it's just you know typical shonen stuff, but this is this is not it. It's just so many things frustrate me. Like like not even like Black Clover frustrated me this much when I first watched it. Like <laughs> so many things just frustrate me, frustrate me about sword art. I still enjoy Black Clover. I don't enjoy this. I would give this like a three out of ten. Like so many things just so just frustrate me. Like I'm I'm waiting for Black Clover to return back to canon and then I'll jump back in. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would wait still, but anyway, yeah, even then. The next show we get to wait for is uh, progressive. progressive. <sighs> and then, back I, to the... I'm actually looking forward to that because would, I, I do want to see what they skipped, like from the original story. Because I like I know damn well I'm not going to read the original source, so yeah. this, this is nice for me to just try to fill in the gaps. Again, so. it's more people trying to say, "Oh, this is the author redeeming himself because he's writing it like ten years later." But nope, yeah, nope. I don't he's know, just, man. He's just still like a fanfic writer, basically. And also, it's just annoys me how he's super popular writing about a game, like a, a, an online game series when he doesn't play games, he doesn't understand game design either. None of it makes any sense. So, so. <clears throat> I mean, but I'm right at the point though where I don't expect anything from this guy. The only so. thing is that, like, because yeah. this season had so many callbacks to Eincred and and um, Laughing Coffin, like. At least progressive. It's like okay, this is where they actually belong instead of all these stupid like yeah, that's true. flashbacks and like well, callbacks. Not even just fl- yeah, not, yeah, they, like that. And it's basically it's like it's still like you know like, with the, another dumb thing is laughing coffin is still going to be a thing moving forward because nobody knows what happens to Poe or like where Poe went or how he even got away and how nobody noticed him. It's just yep. yeah, it's just it's just going to be oh god, I, I can't see going forward it getting any better. It's just gonna become more of a train wreck. I like how the one person that they like ends up coming out of this whole alicization thing is just a- another girl for the harm. And it's they, Sorry, it could have been you know Yujio, yeah, could have been Yujio, but not the guy's like nah, male, kill him. See, I, I thought like I thought the whole like plot twist was like I thought when they when they had Alice, I thought, when they say they're looking for Alice, I thought the plot twist would be oh, it's not really Alice is gonna get out, it's gonna be Yujio. He's gonna be the Alice project because he has this. Like link with Alice, or whatever. I thought that was gonna be the plot twist, but no, nope, the author can't even do that. It's he... too many things for this guy, man. <laughs> and 
Yeah, and that's and then, yeah, that's just one thing that frustrates me with Sword Art. It's like just the harm stuff. Just one. It's not yeah, even, one of the many. Do the harms fan even enjoy the harm of Sword Art? It's like all the girls are just so useless besides Shinon and Asuna. Well, well the whole thing about the harm is just, it's a lie in a sense because I mean Kirito's already with Asuna, yeah. so it's like what the fuck's the point? Like, yeah, that's 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 it's... one part. So like, so like. Does this even appeal to harem fans? Like, I just, I, I don't get it. Not so. Not me, because he didn't choose Sinon. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But yeah, I don't, I don't know. Like I said, I, I don't, I don't care. So, <laughs> at this point, I hope this is the last time we see for Sword Art for a while. I'm not, I don't really care much about Progressive, but we'll probably just watch it, just cause. I'll watch it. Just cause it's part of the anime community. It, it could maybe be good just because it's it's going back to what the We're only part that was really good. animation again because again this series prints money. It's not yeah, a small indie company; they can do it. <laughs> so uh, relying, relying on the animation. So yeah, yeah that's but... hopefully our last time we speak about the sword art. Unless Brian comes in on Friday, we have to hear from him too. But oh, yes, that's true. So that's it for sword art. Thank God. We're going to Shogeki. <laughs> Another show we're excited to talk about, dude. I just want to okay. say, I just want to say, it's so dumb that they made the stupid thing with Asahi being the the, the illegitimate child of the dad. I thought that was just dumb. <laughs> I mean, I kind of saw I it coming. I laughed. They, yeah. they have the same skin tone, so I kind of yeah. saw it coming. You know? Yep. But yeah. wait, I, wait, I, didn't didn't we call it out too? Like, oh, maybe he was in America. Maybe he had a fling, yeah. and then this we is what happened. Yeah, I think we were basically saying something about it, not really taking it completely serious. Yeah. Where it's just like, oh, man, he's like, I had a rough day. And they basically just shows him in the bar and some lady in the show. I was like, okay, all right, man. Yeah. Right. And then uh, <laughs> it's, just, it's just like where this guy's just like, he's like, oh, man, I lost, I lost uh, Soma's dad. And then uh, it was like that whole part I thought was like the, 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 the dumbest part that I thought of this fucking show or this episode, I mean, was that they don't even show both dishes. Mm-hmm. They showed one. Yep. And they didn't even show the winning dish. <laughs> They showed the losing dish, which I thought was I thought it was easily the dumbest thing. I mean that that was like like a multiple things too. Like like besides that, like where because we because you know Ariana wins, we don't know why. We have no idea what she made. And then we have then the, basically the random shit where they go to all these side characters and they're just like, oh yeah, we've been working on doing other stuff, and they're just fighting Noir on all, all these other different parts. Of I was like, what what the fuck is the point of showing us like us now? That you could easily like for speed how much you were speed, for how much you were speed running the show, they could have just been in the stands, and we would not even have questioned it because it's like, what the fuck else would they be doing in this in this show? And it was just, I don't know, it was just, it was just depressing. This show, this show deserves so much better. I, would say, I mean, uh, I do like the the ending though. The ending was at least somewhat satisfying to me, but just for the fact that Erin comes back, and I I guess the fact that she acknowledges her feelings for him. And now that he's back, I mean, he didn't do anything, but you know that they're gonna end up as a couple. So I thought that was really nice. But I mean, that was it. Typical ending. I'll just say, this is an awful <laughs> arc for an awful end for this. Yeah, dude, but but Arena had a leveled up uh, ability. She can undress buildings. Hell yeah, dude! Oh my oh. goodness, that's dude, but, so cool. <laughs> no. Dude, but Soma's dish though. Oh my god, I eat the hell out of thing. That looks so good. Oh. Uh, I don't. Honestly, I don't even know. It's just like, like if you give us this final episode, and they spent like, like I said, like half the episode where it felt like going over that stuff with Noir when it, it didn't matter when they should have been. I mean, this is a long running show. They should have mm-hmm. been wrapping up everything, like basically like showing what everybody's been doing, or not what everybody's been doing, like where everybody's going, instead of just like, wasting so much time. With like what these characters were doing in the background during the tournament, which it didn't fucking matter. Like there was no need for that shit. I would have, I was, I would have been much more interested to see like you know what Soma was doing when he just decided to leave. Um, for like what six was it six, seven, eighth months, six something months, like that. Like that, yeah. yeah. Like him, basically, like what like uh, Arena's development, like uh, it, basically all their develop, like not what the fuck they were doing in the background, but it's like like where they been, like where are they going from here? And instead, like they basically wasted it. And then uh, on that garbage, and then they showed like the dude, the, this like the way they even they ended it was, I mean it was fine. Uh, I got like, when they played like the little piano tone from like the first opening. I was like, oh damn, the show was so good, and it was like it was bad. But I just felt, but it's not like sort of where I was just like we were just expecting it to be trash uh, in a sense. I think we knew that this wasn't going to be good, 
but it felt bad. It just felt bad. Because we, yeah. Because yeah. it, it's just like we, had, I mean, we, by, like, we had good memories of Shogeki, so yeah, it sucks. It was, that, like it just, it just tainted by the ending. Yeah, it's just like fucking just speed running more and more. Like as like as the as it just as it goes down just the line, like the whole just the tournament just didn't matter. Just just face this guy just knew he's gonna get canceled. <laughs> so, well, it's just like like they have like. Like for the noir, like his his background posse, they show they show like uh, some of the characters that we didn't even get to see. Like we we knew of him, like he was like he was like a poison dude, but we saw nothing of this guy. We saw him like basically get a still shot of him losing, and then they moved on. And yet he was like one of the main people like in his crew, and it's it's just and then it was just like a bunch of like where they would show like those crazy like uh, you know they would show like intense images of all these like people where it's like oh new challengers, and they would show nothing of it besides like one still image and then just them moving on. Um, it was just, I don't know. It's, uh, it's, it was too bad. Um, but what'd you guys give the show? I didn't rate it, <laughs> so, uh, probably a five. I don't know. A five out of ten. I, I actually gave this one a four. Um, because I, I sort of was, I mean, sort of was just fucking bad, but it was like, kind of like nice. To, it was like, it was at least like visually appealing in a lot of senses. This one was just not visually appealing. Like we basically did not like when we go, we got to because before they would have like you know crazy cooking animation where they'd actually explain like what they made it like like every you know, everything that was going on. This one, it's basically like yeah, I threw like an egg with some potatoes and mayo and with some salt on top and called it good. I'm like, this is like just basic shit now. How dare it's, you? Like you must, be, you must you, be one of them sort of fans. No, you could easily yeah. If we're giving it a five out of ten. I'm a sort of fan. Uh, it's because we were because it's just like. <laughs> Cause like, cause you could easily tell like where like, when this guy just lost his like his like uh, resource, because mm-hmm. it's just like everything just went basic and it, but he tried to go for like cooking methods, uh, which uh, instead of actually like like uh, not not cooking methods I should say like um fuck like just like ridiculous ass tools which would just make no sense and like there there was like really kind of like no logic behind it when but before like they would actually like because like with with Alice where she was actually like working with like science like almost like science sciencey type of stuff for food where like i don't know if that would, like any of that was actually like uh like if it made any sense or if it was like actually real or uh do you know david I, I mean they kind of lost me with the whole explosion it's kind of like it's exaggerated okay, yeah, so, yeah i assume a lot, a lot of this show is exaggerated but it was yeah. still fun so yeah and it was kind of like following following those lines but then like what who's referencing with the you know the chainsaw lady where she's like blowing shit up it makes a cake um that was just yeah, like, like yeah it just it didn't follow its own logic that's where it falls apart right. so yeah yeah anyway well the show can rest in peace hopefully at least it had fan service well sort of didn't have fan service this is lame fan of- service though like, like it was so nice before and then but i mean we knew both shows are going to be trash but at least this one gave you something to work with sort of other than bercoli i guess bercoli was fan service but um yeah <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, this... I was in Sora just for the fight scenes. I was hoping the fight scenes would make up for it, and it didn't. Yep. Yep. Right. I'm just here for the food, yep. and like the food disappointed too. So it was. They, they both, yeah, they both definitely failed on like what they definitely. were like, what, like the strong suits. I still can't believe the guy yeah. made a fucking pie with all the five stuff. <laughs> God. That's why you lost, though. It's okay. But we, actually, but we called it though. We, we. I mean, I think we basically said like, you know, we said that uh, Soma was gonna make the same dish. Yeah, in a sense, than like from the first dish. Um, but I would have been nice to see Arena's. Like the fuck, you, you, it's the finals, and you can't even show us that shit. Mm-hmm. I thought that was just uh, like when I saw that, I was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me! Like you're gonna you're gonna show us background shit of Noir, but you can't give us a couple minutes to, to actually show Alice's dish, or not Alice, uh, Arena's dish. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, just thought that was. Just... The only thing I can think of is because the the point of this episode was that it wasn't the dish; it was just like. Uh, the whole point of everything leading up to this point was to make sure that Arena doesn't go down the same path that her mom did. Yeah. And because of the dish that Soma made, even though he didn't win, it, it served its purpose. You know, yeah. It was able to free like Arena and her mom. So I think yeah. that's what they're focusing on. And I'm pretty sure... like I don't know why they would make him just the winner because he was <laughs> able to do that. But I guess you know you gotta make it so that Arena stands on top, right? So they made her the winner. But I think if they're to showcase her dish too or why it was so much more superior to Soma's, I think that might have taken away from the impact of Soma's dish, like the meaning of his dish. So that's the only thing I can think of as to why they didn't showcase it. 
but uh, again, like it, it doesn't. The ending didn't really make sense, so it, it's kind of whatever. Well, anyway. everything was predictable. I mean, I think we all basically said Arena was going to win. I thought um, someone was going to win because just because he was the MC. I thought, oh, you, th- you I, actually thought so? Ah, I, thought I, thought I, was watch it. I didn't say it last because I didn't watch it, but I just thought Arena was going to win just because they want to make her take care of her mom. So yeah, like once they like once they like we actually confirmed that that was actually her mom. I think that's basically where all of us are like, all right, this is going to end up with Arena winning. Just because, well, actually, no, no, not right away because we didn't actually know like her the backstory. But once we knew her mom's backstory, I think that kind of like I didn't uh, know if, like if someone was going to win against Asahi. I thought it was going to be. I thought Arena was going to win at the end because like you want you want her to take care of her mom. So yeah, yeah. I, no, I, I, I mean, I think we, we basically all said like where you know Arena was losing it, and then basically Soma was going to be the one to calm her down and basically kind of get her mind back into it. Yep. And it was it became very. Uh, Predictable, but just... the last couple of episodes, I was actually kind of interested in like, like Aaron's dad and her mom. I was like, I was just want, I was, I was actually wondering, yeah, how the hell these two get together because they seem not compatible. So yeah. it was a nice little backstory, kind of... but then like the whole like thing of him having the illegitimate child, like I don't know. <laughs> I that was, was a nice. Touch. I just thought it was dumb. Like just neat, just needlessly thrown in there. See, at least with at least with like food art, they gave you closure to a lot of things, right? Oh, it turns out this guy was his son. That's why they both had that pale ass skin uh, pigment. <laughs> or like, oh, I guess uh, you know, like Aaron and them finally figured out how to like fix their fate. And yeah. oh, look, it looks like Aaron and Summer are going to ship together. You know, blah blah blah. At least there was closure with this I anime. Guess, yeah. So though, that's something, I guess. But, they, but like how David was referencing, like you know, of those backstories of the of, you know, like the mom and the dad. Like we could have easily gotten more time on that too, except <laughs> fucking just stupid shit with Noir. Noir. God, Again, it was just... Noir, the whole, even like the the preliminaries to like the the tournament where like, they're doing like the the rounds like for the convenience store and like that old guy. I mean, the old guy was cool, but it's like none of it mattered. Yeah, <laughs> like, this whole tournament didn't matter. So yeah, we could have just done the backstory and just we could have just done a one v one just with with Asahi and Soma, or just done a, like a regular Shokugeki. Like if you knew you were just gonna get canceled, or you knew it wasn't gonna. The series wasn't gonna end that long. Like you, I don't know. You spent way too long setting up the tournament when it should have been like a team Chukugeki. Yeah, that'd been a stronger ending. But yeah, it was Whatever. weak. Show's over. I don't care anymore. <laughs> end of an era. No more. No more fugasms uh, for now. Yeah, we, we need another show to take up its spot. We need another. Yep. We need another hentai artist to come out and give us it's, his take be- on cooking. It's gonna be tough to like you know, like at the beginning of like this show. Like it had like it had so many good moments. I mean, if we're comparing it to the ending, I'm like, or the ending of this sh- this series, I'm I'm sure like another show could take over and. I mean, it was. I mean, be a lot better. Was, like the main appeal was fan service, but it was like it was still pretty unique. Is that like, we don't usually get like cooking shows as much. And and well animated too. Yeah, so I thought that's what I had going for it, is that like it it still had even though it's like it's just. Like the initial draw is fan service. Like it still was unique in the cooking. So yep. it's gotta be hard to see. Hopefully, someone else can step up and like take its spot. But we'll see. That's okay. Because I, I, mean, always... I mean, like making a cooking. I mean, I guess like being creative is hard. But it's like the premise itself isn't that hard. You just gotta be creative. So it's okay. I will always remember Soma. He's in my figure case. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. So. That's gonna be it for Shogeki no Soma, and then we're we'll on to Rent a Girlfriend. Oof! Oh this, man, this, this episode. This God, dude, I just want to oh, say, like, if this, God. if we didn't have that announcement of the second season, this would have been a horrible ending for the so show. So fucking bad. So bad, dude. The, the beginning of this episode got me thinking that, oh, maybe this guy's gonna pick it up. You know, like he was taking it more seriously. With Ruka, Ruka. Yeah, he did Ruka out on a date. Oh. He's gonna confess to her. And then, bam, here comes Mommy and Chizuru. And then that just totally went out the window. And then that ending where he was going to confess to her, and he did. And then he pulled the bitch move. And he's like, said, oh, Psych. it could be second season. We got to let it go. Oh, my God. And they kept saying it, too. It was yeah. the same shit over and over. They always say it. It's like, oh, they're, 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 it's makes obvious that she doesn't like me. It's a, it's a fucking thing we hear every episode. And they had to say it again. I, I had the show at a 7 or an 8. And then that shit happened. I docked it, and then something else happened. I think I docked it again, and I think I actually went up a one. I can't remember. Well, okay, but, but like, whole, as the show was going, <laughs> like that—that's—that's that's like 
that's an obvious trope for like rom coms. So it's just it's just super annoying this show because like we hate the main character so much. Oh, it's fucking terrible. So it's like it's annoying. Cause... It's it's annoying in other rom coms, but like actually, I feel like other rom coms I understand because that's like a draw. But it's just like it's just really annoying in this show. Like it just. It's just because it's so frustrating you so much. I, I I can't stand this main character. I like, oh my god. Because like, that stuff with Ruka, she's actually normal now. I thought, damn, Ruka is best girl right now. It's uh, because like with all the stuff where all of a sudden they went on a date, you know, she's acting normal. She's like, oh yeah, I realized that wasn't actually working. And then she's just like, you know, not like psychotic in a sense where she's actually like, you know, normal. I thought, like, holy shit, like this guy's got to go for this. And then, to say, and then the same thing when he says where he just keeps basically wallowing about something about like, well, every time he says like basically wanting a girlfriend and all this other shit, it's just like, dude, you got one right there. And then just doesn't go for it. No, and then like the first five or ten minutes when he was giving that like monologue in his head, like, yeah, she's a she's a little like uh, like needy, you know, but then she's cute. She's perfect. You know, I don't deserve a girl like her. Like, why does she, like what does she see in me? You know, like that was, that was my thoughts. Exactly about him so he was he was kind of like coming to realization about how bad he is and then, like i said i i thought that the show was going to finally like have maybe like an anime original ending because it looks like it's going to be him and ruka together until at the very end and then like i i don't know if it was this this moment that you're talking about but uh after that confession with uh chizuru at apartment and then he went to go lay down and he's like man like why is my life in hard mode is, is that what triggered you yeah i'm like you're the reason yep. why it's in hard mode yeah yep. You only can blame yourself, sir. You you are the fucking idiot that's making this shit harder than it has to be. It's uh, just oh my god. Let's just uh well, let's see. That's, that's a message to see all you simps out there who have trouble confessing Jesus. to girls. Dude. And the fucking thing with this MC, like he goes on a date and he looks like a fucking hobo every single time. <laughs> like they like they they all look so good and everything else like this. And this guy the fucking looks like he just walked out of a trash can. <laughs> but it's just like it's just this Dude. fucker comes out with like it's just. This fashion Fucking sense Christ. is like horrible, man. Even for like, yeah, I, even for like, our standards, we like we don't like care much about fashion as much. Like this, no fashion sense is horrible. I, I, I hate well, this well, I, so I, much. I can't say anything because I have horrible fashion sense too. You know so I'm just bad, not. Is it that bad? Cool. Yeah. Is it that bad? You know what? It's bad. Uh, like, it, it, he's he's a lot more colorful than I am, at least. <laughs> oh my god! So I'm gonna step like, out of that. But I'm just saying, yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty funny. Well, the thing is, I hate it because it's basically it's like, oh, I, like you know what? Do you want to go on a date and all this other stuff? But yeah, he puts no effort into it. He shows up, looks like he just woke up, uh, and then then he goes to meet Chizuru just like in the back in a, of his house, and he gets fucking just basically uh, dressed, you know, dressed to the nines. And this, I'm thinking, motherfucker, you're not even leaving the house. And I'm like, and it's just, uh, I don't know, I, I I can't, I just, I hate this man, I hate this guy so much. <laughs> like, holy, it's basically the only reason, like, in how like, we settle for Snafu. The only reason to watch that show is for Hachiman. Basically, this show is like only for the like, the main girls. Like, mm-hmm. it's just like their 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 characters are like they're 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 different and like they seem so much better. And this guy just fucking can't. St- I don't. I just. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> I, it's like because uh, I don't know that, that whole different angle with this book. <laughs> and then yeah. also like, with this show is it's like. Because, like, the whole thing with Chizuru and uh, Mami, I thought, like, okay, maybe something bigger is going to be developing. But they're just like, eh, I'm not going to tell anybody. Uh, it's like, I just know. And then just kind of split apart. So that's, Even though... It just, I don't know, it just felt pointless. Like, the whole thing. Like, it was. I have no idea what Mami... Like, I understand she's, like... She's... I don't know. Like, maybe she was, like, mad this whole time. Maybe she was, like, being pissed. That, like... Because she thinks so low of Kazuo that, like... That like I can't believe he would like you know get like a cute girl like that. Maybe she feels better now that, that she's a rental girlfriend. But just the whole thing just felt so pointless. Like I didn't understand any of the things. Maybe we'll find out season two. Oh god, the, what what's up, Koo? So maybe we'll find out in season two because ah uh, well we'll see. I mean I'm sure there's gonna be a season two. Like uh, there was announced. This show, so. it was already announced. Yeah. Yeah, this show is pretty popular. So yep. yeah. And then uh, the the end scene where they showed her in a Benz with another uh, like older guy. So it looks like she's kind of doing her own thing too. But instead of a rent a girlfriend, it's kind of like the old school like uh, yeah. companion service that Japan wait, has. Are you talking about escort? Escort, yeah. Like it looks like she's an escort herself. You so about like ma- the mommy. Mo- yeah, mommy. I, yeah. I think she just has an older boyfriend. I think she's just like just she's just trying to find a sugar daddy. I don't think, I think, she's, like, I don't think she's escorting. 
or doing like uh i don't know because then there was that one scene where her brother came in and said hey there's another weird guy here for you yeah i think it's just some guy like she's probably like like flirted with or something like i mean like, right like, but older, does... older, older sally man she met at a bar or something right but she's not giving the impression that she's just seeing one other guy she's probably seeing like multiple other guys well, maybe she's so. playing a bunch of sugar daddies so they can give her money or whatever <laughs> maybe, she's not yeah, no, she maybe that's Maybe that's I, I, didn't, I just didn't see, I didn't see it as like an escort kind of thing. I just see it more as like just her playing other guys just to get stuff. Maybe if it was her age, it's fine. But since it's an older guy in a Benz, that usually is like the car that you showcase that it's a rich older guy and, and a girl's an escort or something of that I nature. Know, I, I don't think it's escort. What are you saying, Ku? I've watched a lot of animes like these. What I know, are you saying, right? Ku? I, I, I know. I don't think it's escort. <laughs> I think it's just like just she's, she's following an older guy that... Oh, you naive! I think girl. David too. Yeah, that, that's what I think. With I'm, I'm on David David side so, with this. You but, naive, um, but it's like the whole thing. Yeah, with mommy, just just I don't know. She's she seems really relevant in this show. Like just the whole besides the whole like causing drama, she's been gone for so long. Like the whole her whole thing's done and over with. So I don't see her not any, anymore, sir. Nope, she's part of this now. <laughs> I don't see any point yep, of it. She's like, in. I don't say explain it later, but I don't see any part of it. But yeah. What was truly pointless was showcasing Sumi in the last episode, <laughs> just throwing her out the window. I think it's just never I think it's just because you're gonna bring it. It's just the manga <laughs> because like the author didn't plan. He he didn't plan <laughs> planning out like didn't think it'd be a twelve, <laughs> 12 episode anime. So that part I can like, I get I can like understand that like it's it's hard getting it. like you can't just ignore her. I guess. Yeah, I kept thinking like this show could have like I, every time like when that stuff happened with uh, Chizuru and Mommy, I kept thinking like, okay, this is where this is where Kazuya comes in with with Ruka, basically saying like, you know, we're like this is like the official couple type of thing, and basically and it's you know saber in a sense where basically it's just like you know the whole rental thing is done, and then went a whole different fucking path that basically just kind of continues the cycle. I'm you thinking drag you it on, sell those copies. Fuck man, but it's just like. They made Ruka so much like at first I was thinking like I like Ruka more just because we got a little bit of the flashback story, but then, uh, but then I'm like okay her personality is a little too fucking clingy, but then they cleared that up. I was like damn. I was like well, then it, this then it was like where it'd be because in his his mind before like because his issues he had with her, like she's not having those issues anymore, mm-hmm. and then but it, but you know it's basically his, his his life is still in hard mode, yeah. and then it's 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 hard too because she's actually try like she's she's like the most realistic and a most so likable girl at this point because she even says like yeah like i know that faking this shit is not gonna work with you so i'm just gonna do my best to make you fall in love with me like if that shit's not adorable it makes you want to just cherish <laughs> her like i don't know what he'll what will like at least she's honest and she's willing to like uh like go head on for it right she's real yeah she was like best girl but like with the way that they're showcasing her how she's always like know second guessing herself and now at the end of this episode it looks like she fell for the guy so of course she's going to develop feelings for him too i mean like go figure right so at least with her she's more of a direct and more realistic girl with the other girls it's kind of like they have their own like issues. teaser would direct, never direct she, she, if she wasn't the main heroine she would never develop feelings with kazuya like he's such a weak character like Dude, it's like i mean i have i have no issues with chizuru but she's just basically like the typical kind of basic girl in like all those like rom com harm shows. Right. But there's nothing really like like makes them different. It's just basically they have like they just have like the 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 main heroine armor plot yeah. where basically it's just like they're the one. But it's at the same time though, like like Ruka has like you know we we know more about her backstory. I mean, maybe we'll find out more about Chizuru's later on. But it's like we mo- we know more about Ruka's. Uh, I don't. And then we don't. We know kind of mommy. She's kind of like still a question question yep. mark. But it's just like they're they're still, they're. I still don't care, but yeah. Yeah, but the, but their personality and everything like just like are, are way different than what Chizuru is. She's just basically like the typical, basic, MC heroine, and then but the, and still, these other ones actually have like. She's still best girl though. Oh my god! I don't know. I still like Ruka. Like yeah. after this debatable. episode, Ruka. Yeah, yeah debatable. Ruka's definitely Ruka's a better deal. like character. Yeah, but I just still like Chizuru more. Yeah, yeah. everyone has her. She's a better written character. Yeah. It's just a cheese who's like too nice. Uh, That's why, like. Oh no, you know, David was saying. David was saying Ruka. What? Were you saying which which character was written better? R- Ruka was written better. Okay, yeah. I thought that. But, oh, okay, yeah, that's what makes her the best girl. <laughs> no, I still like Cheese Ru. For now, it's. Uh-huh, yeah. For now, okay. Well, no, I, I like Cheese too, but it's just more of like it's just 
the typical like nothing it's flashy. Typical, it's just, it's what, yeah. it's what I like. So, no worries, man. But uh, what'd you guys rate this? I don't, I don't, again, I don't care, man. This show uh, frustrates me. Yeah, I'd have to give it a seven out of ten because I uh, I enjoyed it, but not for the right reasons, you know. Yeah. And then so, yeah, this, the girls this, definitely this, carried it for me. This so. guy is like he's definitely like the number one like on a worst character. I don't know something about worst character ever. Like I've never had someone yeah. frustrating this this much. I've never hated it. like honestly like Super redeemed himself. This guy, this fucker can never redeem himself. Like, like he's he's too far down. Like it's mm-hmm. one thing to have like the typical like like romance main character doesn't do shit or it just it sucks or even like the the really etchy ones just just strip like there's always like molesting girls but like this guy is just like I don't know he's just almost, he's just worse than all of them he's just so frustrating. I'll admit yeah. he is different though too like oh he's, god not for the right reasons not for the right reasons, reasons but, but he is different uh, every time the show was trending was for the wrong reasons they weren't it wasn't trending because it was a good show is because this guy is legitimate trash right i don't know different so he's he's just, different. Like, he's, he just always just like like what insecure he's always second guessing he's always like doing stupid shit it's not much different he hasn't than changed other. yeah he's it's 12 doing, episodes he he's hasn't not changed. doing much things other than other like romance main characters so i don't know how different he is it's like he's a side character, but he somehow got the MC slot because the MC was sick for the day. <laughs> like, imagine if Sword Art didn't have Kirito as MC, but it was Klein, and Klein was running the show. Like, that's what I mean by different. Like, oh, I don't man. see how I don't see how this guy can be an MC, but if he was a side character, I would kind of get it. Like, like, uh, like his friend, I you, forget who even, it was. Um, Curry was like, a, like he's not even as bad as this no. guy. Not not Curry, but like uh, the friend that gave Chizuru the, the the tickets for the cruise ship, whatever. Uh, yeah. Kibet, I forgot I his name too, but yeah, yeah, I forgot his name. Kibet. But that Kibet. guy was, was MC material. Yeah. yeah, this person is not MC yeah. material. He's the guy so, that basically lost out on the job because he was sick that day. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that's why I say he's different. God, it was just oh, I don't know, but like, yeah, most frustrating it's... like I've ever been with like usually because usually like um if they're like a shy main character, I usually root for them because I feel bad. I can't mm-hmm. do that for this guy at all. He's just, he, everything is literally his fault. Like, cause other, like other main characters too. Like when you have like, you know, like a Sunray main heroine, it's usually like the guy's just unlucky and he gets in these bad situations. So like for all the other, like I, man, for like, all the other romance main characters I trash on, I like, just feel bad. I feel like <laughs> there's more unlucky at the, the friend yeah. of this guy who basically made his own, his own shitty situation. Yeah, this is this is all. And his also, fault. that's the thing. That's the thing too. It's like, like I said, all like the obvious things you rant on, but like the one thing that really bothered me the most about this guy was like he kept lying so much and got everyone trapped in his lies. So it's like, yep. so I just kept saying like it's one thing you can be cringe by yourself, but you just like force everyone to go along with you. That's like the worst thing for me. And then he calls Ruka the liar. Yeah. Fucking prick! Like, oh my god. Like that's that's <clears throat> so that's just my. It's like. Like you guys said the obvious things, but that's like that's like the one thing that really bothered me the most was all the lying. And, and, and he didn't change. I mean, basically, we're still like where we began. We're like, oh, she never fell in love with me. And it's just like fucker. We've heard this every time too. And then it's just like it's he basically still st- like stuck in the same loop where he had the chance to basically say like I like basically I want you, but then he said, but it's for you know basically rent a girlfriend. Like fantastic. We haven't changed anything. We're still right where we started. Yeah, and I think it was this episode that just convinced me. If if the guy really wanted to make him likable, he could have easily done so already. But he's yeah. always make him choose these other routes. So he's like, doing first, it on purpose. Because first, I thought they were going to change the, the kind of like the the, the, the path when mm-hmm. he first said that. I was like, oh damn! I was like, are they actually going to have it like where like it's out there? And then they're basically even though she took it as basically like, you know I think she's smart enough. This fucking Kazu Kazu is an absolute idiot. Right. Um, where it's like I, she basically knew like knows now. Because you know, obviously you know, she pretty much figured out like what he meant. Um, it wasn't hard. <laughs> this guy's an idiot. <laughs> He's just a fool. Um, but it, so, but I guess like in in a sense like that is out there now. But it would have been better though if he just like held to it and just to see what like what would change from that, right? Or like how they go from here. But instead, he tried to cover up. He tried to cover it up, and basically, it's just oh god. And That's here we are, one. basically episode one again, with more girls. But uh, I do hear that um, the next season, it should be a lot better. It gets a lot better. Was Sword Art better? Huh? 
Was Sword Art better? I mean, I don't trust Sword Art fans, but this is a new this is a new audience. And then from what I'm hearing, I don't uh, trust rom com fans either. So. Right. I mean, it's it's something. So I don't know. I'm not getting my hopes I mean, up, but I mean, but is everyone is saying like everyone who's read the the light novel, they're they're all like in, in the same boat. Like, it's, yeah, it's, he he does get better. It's a manga, but or yeah, I, mean, I, I just remember like people trashing the manga so hard. Like when it, the anime was announced, like everyone was saying, "Man, this this manga is a train wreck. It sucks." Like. <laughs> That's why I really didn't want to watch it in the first place, and I should have listened. The only way I should have listened. The, the, the only way I'd give this show a ten is if this guy ends up alone at the end. I'll give the show a ten out of ten. Ooh, yeah. Yep. I hate this guy. <laughs> I hate this guy so much. Man, this guy just this he he did the impossible. Man, he made me feel bad for the other romance main characters. Fuck, it's just like. And it's, you just feel bad for all the all girls, too. It's, it's like, all, why are you here? That's how low the bar has fallen. He's basically lower the bar. Yeah. yeah. I gave it a six. Uh, I had it at a seven until basically then he was running in and then basically made the comment that Ku brought up. Made, you know, why is my life in hard mode? I was like, mother, paused it, moved over, hit it a six. I'm like, we're not fucking doing this <laughs> again. And then I just basically left it Jokes as is. Use, like, we are. Holy fuck. Yeah, I know. It's just... God, this man has just not changed at all, and it's just, ugh, it's just. Ugh. What's that? Uh, what's that? That phrase again? Um, Was it? And Sandy my... is doing things over and over again, and expecting things to change. <laughs> no, uh, oh. my disappointment is immeasurable, oh, oh, and my day, and my is, day is ruined. ruined. <laughs> that's that's a meme, man. All right, mine's. Not <laughs> See, but this, but this guy was always trash, though. Like, I never had faith for this guy. I think me and David were basically out. This like this fucker is terrible. Like after episode two, maybe was, three. Who like, had, had he had the six because the six he, episode no, trial. But he broke out before that, though. He gave no, up I, I get that. it. Yeah, I gave it before that. But what I'm yeah. saying is, is they had a lot of opportunities for him to redeem himself. Like if you if you remember a lot of the other rom coms are where they have like a weak character. And then he just develops through the like the show, and he just gets a lot better. We like, get redemption quick too. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. And then this guy had many opportunities. There was a cruise ship. There was like after, uh, like the the grandma came to his house. I mean, fucking even this episode, he had a chance to redeem himself. Uh, like a couple episodes before that, he was with Sumi, and like he protected her from like a bunch of guys. Like there was so many opportunities for him to change like his direction and go towards like the righteous path or make everything all right. And then the author just said, "Nope." Fuck that, and just made him go this no, way, the like other, on a downward spiral. The other said, "Nope, we gotta sell more manga, so we gotta keep dragging right. the story." Yeah, and so all, I mean, like you, said, all you simps are are funding my retirement. Yeah, no, so good. yeah, so it has the potential, but so that's why I believe that if he really wanted to, he could totally change the route and make him a better. Could he? Or could he? I feel like he can. He can. He just. I think that's what makes us so mad, right? Like he shows us these like glimpses of hope. And he just takes it away, like in front of you. So. I actually agree. He could he could easily make a character because like the the like the like the depth of the of like the the like the main like uh, heroine girls like they all have like crazy different personalities. Like they're solid. Right. This guy's just well, I guess in a sense this guy's solid too, but just for the wrong <laughs> yeah. reason. Yeah. So I, so I don't know. It's I still have no idea if this guy did it on purpose or or what. But it's just like I I would. If I if I were to ever go like one of those like question panels, that's the first thing I was like, did you mean to make this guy absolute fucking trash, uh, or did or did you actually think this guy was like somebody to look up to, or or like or if there's or if you saw this guy was like developing in some like sort of sense? Not it's not look up to, it's relate to. It's more relate to. Yeah, there you go. That one. Rom com yeah. romance writer like male romance writers always wants, especially hard writers. They want the fan. They want the fantasy. They want to put themselves in the main Ugh. character's shoes and pretend they're the character getting the harms. And so, so this always, is the guy, he... and so they they always write like the girls they like as like their heroine, and they so made that, that he made himself just trash. That's why like, a lot of authors always get mad like <laughs> when the audience doesn't side with with them with their heroine. Yeah, no. So, but yeah, I don't know. It's it's possible. I, I'd say I'm right, but I mean, it's just all theories. <laughs> it's just all theories. Uh, anyway, so, we'll be talking more about this in the future. God fucking damn it. But in a sense, I'm Who's actually kind of excited. Baby? Like, yeah. I actually am very, I'm I actually, not I don't know, excited. I like these girls a lot. Like, basically, like, like, Ruka is, I don't know, she's she's making it up there pretty pretty quick on my top top tier waifu list. Dude, how do you bring Takeshi Ray into this and then, like, not have her do more than one episode? Such a wasted opportunities. Again, I, I put that more in the manga. It's like, it's probably far too far in the manga to, like, just to cut out, so... You could have easily had one of the other VAs for the girls just 
have like a second voice for her. That's true. Easily. <laughs> well, it's all right. Season, season two, we'll have more of her, I'm sure. I guess. Yeah. Well, that's me. So. <laughs> Even though she doesn't even t- talk that much, but yeah, that's that's it. That's all for Rent a Girlfriend for now. I'm not excited to keep talking about this, so I am. It's gotta be it's falling back on you guys when it comes back out for season two. See, Storner, Storner, I'm not really fun. To, I'm not excited to talk about this show. I'm actually excited to talk about Man. for the wrong reasons, even though it just gets me I can't uh, enraged. Frustrations. So yeah, that's it. And then open the coup. Is this was this the season finale of Uzaki Chan? Or is that next week? Yes. Okay. Yes, it was. So let's hear so your thoughts on Izaki. How did the cliffhanger go? Uh, so, I mean, I should have known better. Uh, it was all right. She basically was really sad and said we couldn't hang out anymore because summer was about to end and she didn't do her summer homework. Right, so she yeah. needed him to like copy off of his homework so oh, they could yeah. still hang out. So, I mean, I should have seen it coming. Obviously, it wasn't going to be anything dramatic. Izaki but... just wants to hang out. <laughs> Right, so it was just, and then the ending was basically like a full circle, right? She was really sad because summer's about to end, and she's like, oh, we can't hang out anymore. And then uh, the guy was like, what are you talking about? We can hang out. Like, we're going to be together from now on anyways. And then, like, bam, there goes that ship, and then now they're going to be together for all time, whatever. Uh, but, I mean, it was, like, the whole series was enjoyable. I'd have to give it, like, an 8 out of 10. Uh, it wasn't anything amazing, but I did, like, the, uh, like, you, you didn't think it was a lot. boring? <laughs> No, I didn't think it was boring. I thought it was like nice. It was enjoyable, you know. Like it wasn't like super entertaining. Yeah, so you, oh man! So you were one of the guys who commented on that trash taste episode. <laughs> oh, it wasn't me, but I would have if I actually cared. Uh, did uh, somebody comment about that? No, because they're so. at they're asking for comments. There's like they're calling out like tell tell me why you legitimately enjoy this show, blah blah. Yeah. Even though and I, even though they're all degenerates who just watch like hentai and read Tojinji anyways. No, I actually, read, I actually read the comment section. There was a, quite a few people who was like me as well. They're like, yeah, you know, like, I don't know what you're expecting from a slice of life. It was enjoyable. After a hard day of work, I just want to, like, you know, kick off my shoes, kick back, and just enjoy myself, you know? That's been my Nanan Biore show. Like, basically, Nanan Biore is like that, where it's basically just, it, you just, it's just like nothing really happens, but it's just, it's calming, soothing, some, a couple laughs here and there, and you move on. Yeah, you know, like, characters have good chemistry with each other. There's some, like, ongoing gags. You know, lots of lots of memes or lots of references to like other things as well. So, you know, it's always nice to see that and chuckle. You know, um, and then you know you gotta have the hot mom. That was a nice addition. I gotta, gotta say, have a hot mom. I, saw, okay. I thought her. You gotta have a hot mom. I saw her okay. Top tier. Top tier. Yeah. So, like I said, it wasn't too bad. Uh, hopefully, there's a season two because you know, like, why not? But uh, yeah, I, I I really enjoyed it. You know, eight out of ten. If if you have nothing else to do or you just want to relax, I, I'd say give it a shot. Is uh, the show popular? Uh, I don't know. I'll, I see mainly as memes. I don't know how popular it really is. Right. But then again, it's so like it, it's weird because um, it's a well, it's well known. I don't know if it's. I like, just see it as memes cause, because I was because yeah. um because I noticed too on like like the uh, the country world YouTube channel they have clips of like the Monster Girl show and those clips get so many views for some reason even though I didn't think the show was that popular. So. Yeah. Those. So you never know. But if you. If if like Uzaki doesn't like turn you away, like if you like your character or you can stand her, I think you enjoy the show. But uh, I know Taylor mentioned that she thought the girl's annoying, but I think that's kind of like the, the whole premise that it's just annoying girl that I, constantly wants I, to hang out really, with you. I don't like the annoying characters that are always bugging other people, so I probably won't enjoy it. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I would give it like at least one episode a shot. And if you don't like her after one, if you can't stand her after one episode, I, I don't think it's for you. But I really like not- Slice Life. I've been liking it more and more uh, during, you know, when I get older and older now. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Who knows? Oh, and then uh, Misfit of the Demon Academy is over. I, didn't, uh, I haven't cut, been cut up for like since episode 8 or 9 or whatever. So, so just, tell me, just tell me what happens at the end. <laughs> uh, so, like, it was nothing drastic, but basically uh, the hero and then the Demon King, they reunite to defeat the, the true villain of the series. Mm-hmm. Uh, go figure, they won. And then, uh, I think the best out, uh, the best thing about the season uh, ending or season finale was that uh, this guy had two hit liners again. So it was that was pretty much it. Like you're you're just like watching it for stupidity, but it's so good. Like who is you know? um, who is the the hero reincarnate into, or was uh, he just actually? Did he actually show up later? No, he was actually uh, the swordsman friend that um, the MC came across earlier 
uh, episode five, six. I don't. I forget. That's fine. I don't remember. But it's fine. But yeah, he was he reincarnated as a demon. So okay. He, he, yeah. Um. But yeah, I think I forgot what I forgot what he said. But it was just one of those things where it's like, oh, you thought destroying my source would would destroy me or something of that nature. Just like a dumb joke about him being OP. Yeah, like oh, just because you're the world's order, you think you can like rule me out or whatever. Yeah, it's <laughs> it like just these really OP sayings that's kind of stupid, but for some reason, like it, it works. Like it's, but you expect it from the show. Yeah, you expect it from the yeah. show, and it works. So I thought that was pretty funny. And then, uh, yeah, I guess at the very end, uh, he has another girl that's gonna be added to his harem, and apparently, uh, you know, she has like ten thousand kids or some shit like that. Um, yeah. <laughs> Like you, you, you'd have to watch it. I thought it was pretty funny, but like the the, the, the humor in this show, and then the uh, like just the one liners that the that the guy has, I, I think it's 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 pretty funny. So I wish uh, I would have watched those shows. Fuck. I, I would give this like a seven out of I mean, ten. You can just watch it while you eat, Ryan. This one of those shows. I should. I I did raise zero. Like that and Uzaki Chan. So that's basically what I ended up doing coup with my day, my my birthday after uh. A brutal, brutal day of uh, of work. I basically I went to I, I uh, no I watched Rezero. Caught yeah. up to it. You watched Rezero after a brutal day of work. Yeah. Oh god, how does that not make you even yeah. more like in, like stressed or like? Because you know I get to watch Super Die. Oh <laughs> so, actually, even though I end up feeling bad for the guy, you're just yeah, a hater. I I was, and now actually I don't mind him. So well, I know a, I know a true fucking hater now. I basically <laughs> a true person. I need to basically hate. Right. See, I told you, like, Subaru's, like, kind of redeemed with this season, so... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it, yeah since you did just uh, binge-watch everything uh, recently, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd be kind of interested to hear what you say about it next I week mean, after that. Yeah, because so. we got no more shows left, so... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but, I mean, it's, like, at least, like, with wait, was it with Subaru, like, he had moments, like, during, like, the first season, even, where he definitely, like, redeemed himself. Like, mm-hmm. he was moving forward, like, he had, you know, awesome moments, epic moments. This guy basically, I think, saved True Zero once, I don't know, and then like, but like nothing was done because of it though. Like there was no like development afterwards. It basically was just like, oh yeah, saved you from uh, saved or it saved you from drowning, but this is you know this I mean, still, he still almost, he almost drowned himself too, so he still had to no. True Zero save him back. Yeah, but anyway, <laughs> anyway, Super is a lot better than this guy. So All right, so that's, that's good. so that's gonna be it for the show. So I guess that just wraps up fall season. So, well, actually, no, we still have, Mostly. so, so yep. our next Except episode, the next episode, we got to talk about the ReZero finale, because that comes out on Wednesday, got and got then, high school. got high school finale, so, we'll give our thoughts for that, and then, um, and just a reminder, too, we're going to be moving this podcast to Friday, recording on Friday nights, so, um, by Friday, October 3rd, is when, um, we get uh, Damachi Season 3, and Haikyuu coming back, and then, I think Jujutsu Kaisen comes out that day, so we'll talk about that as well, so, we're going to do season reviews of those the two shows and then the three new fall shows so we're gonna be trans- again do our transition transition period to to fall we'll probably also um do um just previews of show- shows that haven't come out yet or just give our thoughts on what we're also we're excited for so yeah, yeah so just the, another the, transition the main change is also because uh because uh because uh, our other friend brian that was a huge like that was like a really big part of this he ended up getting a different like different job different hours so we're gonna try to move, and hopefully he'll be able to join us uh, at least some of the days on Friday, and then also hopefully we'll be able to have Sasha at the beginning as well. Yeah. Um, uh, Peter, uh, so Peter is ever like caught up in anime? We'll get him on too because he says he's more free yeah. on Fridays than Sundays. So I really, yeah. I really so, miss hearing Peter and Sasha talk about One Piece, even though I don't watch it. So oh, hopefully, dude, still hilarious. hopefully we can get them back <laughs> for that. So and then maybe Brian will catch up one day because I know Brian's been watching One Piece. There's so many other things this guy could watch. This guy watches just one piece. I mean, it's not a bad choice. So. Yeah, but anyway, yeah. If you're tired of just seeing our three faces, we'll hopefully we'll have a few different voices. So. I know I am. Oh, <laughs> Same. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah, that's all I got. So yeah, so that's that's just a normal trend. And also, I mean, technically, I guess it wouldn't be this week Friday. I guess I guess it'd be like next week Friday. It'd be like the one year anniversary of the podcast. But. We don't have oh any, damn. We don't have anything special. I don't, I don't have time to do any of this. So. I'll figure something out about the two year anniversary. So wait till then. Just nothing for one year. Two year? Yeah. Sir, we'll, we'll, we'll figure something maybe. I, 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 don't have, about I don't have time for this. So yeah, I'll yeah, do yeah, wait yeah. till the second year. All right. 
So maybe that, we could maybe we could, we could throw something together if you're not around, David, or you could always yeah. just listen to us you if you're can, busy. You, you can do whatever. I'm just not. I'm not gonna do anything. Oh god, we I tried that once. It didn't go very well. <laughs> maybe it'll be my redemption arc. I mean, but I was thinking just like <laughs> doing having a uh, like a highlight video, just like the best of or, like our best. Oh comments. my god. Where basically because so many... <laughs> that's why that's also what's nice about having the intro clips is like you just pick the intro clips and do. Best but we didn't start that till later though. Yeah, but that's but we have uh... so many intro clips like we it's do like a compilation yeah, okay. so but that, i mean that that's, we'll that's one idea i wanted but again i don't have time for this year so that's for year two so that's gonna hey, be man, it for i have us. a little bit more time that's gonna be it for <laughs> wrapping up for summer mainly so i want to thank the audience for joining us shout out to johan who's vip in our twitch chat right now and he's still our first number one fan. Yep. he's our number one true fan thanks number for your one. podcast as well whoever downloads and or streams this as well yeah let us know how we're doing. Mm-hmm. Comment in some way. Please comment. Actually, yeah. Please. I'll I'll probably just keep say it next week too. I just I need to know if like people are I need to know if people are actually viewing this or just bots. So I just want a comment yeah. saying you're a real. Are person. you human? Are you yes. a real person? Please. Yes. Check check at least, check the green arrow. At least, at least on YouTube. I know we don't have a good system set up for the audio podcast, so we'll figure something out later. But yeah, we're still improving. So. And I want to thank the panel for joining me today. Thanks, guys. Was, no problem, man. I guess it's always fun to talk about Sorter. I guess even though I, I get frustrated during summer of all the ranting, it was still pretty fun to with you guys. I never want to yeah. rant. I never want to rant that much ever again in my life. Oh, we we gonna make it happen, sir. <laughs> you know damn well it's well, gonna happen. We have, we have season two of Rent a Girlfriend. It's gonna happen. Oh God. Uh, we have Progressive, but it's the original won't story. Make you rant so as much as the original Sword Art, so. Yeah, so it should be down a little bit more, but now we get the we get the, we get high Q animation and we get JC staff uh, Damachi. I can't that's, wait. That's you man, They're not talking about me. Fair, so, fair enough. So that's it for this week. Thanks, guys. See you next. See you Friday. So, bye. Bye. Bye.